Hello everyone, and welcome to Fanfic TV, so we are back with an interesting series on what if Naruto become a god of symbol awakens the new power. But before we start, I just want to remind you to please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button if you enjoy my content, let's start the story. This is a warning. Due to foolish humans, a deadly virus has spread, unfortunately the human race will perish. It all happened out of the blue, everyone died left and right causing mayhem and panic throughout the streets of Tokyo. Two eight-year-old blondes saw these horrors as they held their siblings, running silently in the alleys and streets trying to make their way back home, the Hayakuya Orphanage. Passing the Taka Amahara shopping center, the bedding store, and even the seafood store where the boy had to watch in horror as the owner died in front of him, but finally they reached their destination. They ran through the stairs as they spotted the director of the orphanage collapsed on the floor. Mika, the director isn't breathing I think she's. The girl didn't want to finish her sentence but Mika already understood as he knelt close to the director and ordered his sibling. Naruto put them over there and stay alert do you hear me? Mika said as he tried to wake up the director only to be in vain as the sound of footsteps then startled the children of the Hayakuya orphanage. Big brother, Ruto, said the young Kutra as he gripped his elder brother's arm in fear as the voice of the woman resumed to speak through the speakers and televisions. However, we know that the virus does not infect children under 13 and younger. Therefore, we, the direct unit of the third progenitor, Cruel Teps, will start the protection of the children of this district. The looming of a shadow and the sound of the fluttering coat easily alerted the children as they looked to their right, seeing the hooded man break through the window with a mere palm strike. This action caused Naruto to lose his balance in shock while Akane quickly cushioned his fall, while the other children hurtled close to Michaela. The door opened revealing another hooded figure, easily cornering the helpless orphans. Naruto swallowed his fear as he stuttered through his question, W. W. H. W. What are you going to do to us? We vampires are here to protect the silly little humans from themselves. The vampire said slyly as his large hand engulfed Naruto's vision. Underscore, four years later. Sanguinum, the third capital of the vampire world, located underneath the ruined city of Kyoto. It is home to prominent vampire nobles as well as humans who serve as livestock for the vampires. Protection my ass. Naruto said crushing his foil pouch to vent his frustration as he came back from the cathedral after getting his daily blood sucked off. You're not gonna drink it again, you'll get sick, Michaela said in worry as his brother sat next to him. It's nasty, I won't drink this disgusting crap, tt ebeo, Naruto replied. Michaela sighed as he said, you need to quit being so picky. Naruto retorted, and you need quit doing what the fangs tell you. Mika enjoyed Naruto's genuine worry and got up as he confessed, I don't think it's all that bad to be honest. Seriously, you can't mean that. At least we're alive and more importantly we get to live with our family, Michaela pointed out as he disposed his foil pouch to the trash chute and looked back to his brother, don't you think that's enough? No, this isn't how a family should live, Naruto frowned as he looked to Michaela, we aren't livestock, you know. Maybe you're right on that but being this stubborn won't change that fact that Michaela was rudely cut off as Naruto pitched his foil bag straight at him making the intelligent boy to quickly dodge. The boy sighed as he picked Naruto's foil bag and chastised, see what I mean, if you keep acting like this you're going to piss of the wrong people. I don't care, as long as I stood for my belief then that's all that matters to me, Naruto strongly said to Mika, which caused him to frown. But if you die then we'll be sad. Mika said somberly, after all we look up to you the most. Naruto stood silent as he tried to pick his words carefully, but couldn't say a word when he and Mika heard the sound of footsteps coming close by. No hood, must be a noble, Naruto noted as he saw that the fanger walked in a pompous manner and smiled constantly. Lord Farid, Michaela said as he ran towards the noble. Mika wait, Naruto yelled out as he tried to catch him but was too late to act as Mika was already in front of the noble. Ah, young Mika, Farid said in a suave tone, will you come to my mansion tonight as well? I would love to, Michaela said cheerfully to the noble. As would I my dear boy, Farid said as he stroked Mika's cheek, you have such sweet blood, you're always welcome to my abode. Farid blood red eyes then caught the attention of Naruto and smiled as he asked the second blonde, will your friend be joining as well? Naruto immediately scowled at that question, go f. 
Michaela rudely interrupted Naruto's offensive swearing as he sealed his mouth with his hand. Oh I don't know if that's a good idea, he's very shy. Oh what a shame, Farid said but did not seem disheartened one bit, see you at my mansion tonight Mika. Sure. Minutes passed as both Michaela and Naruto were walking through the slums. I can't believe you Mika, Naruto nagged at him, why are you letting that noble drink your blood willingly, T.T. Ibeo? I let him because Lord Farid belongs to a distinguished noble family, in exchange for my blood, he will give me anything. Michaela informed to his sibling as he continued. Plus he serves dinner when I visit. It might seem wrong to you but you got to use your head if you want to survive in this place. Naruto stopped, then walked towards his sibling and silently released a right hook that made him fall. Michaela looked up and saw Naruto's disappointment in him and then walked away. Ruto wait. Mika said as he regained balance from his fall, isn't there anything you want? Not from you, T.T. Ibeo. Mika watched sadly as Naruto walked away from him. Naruto laid his back on the roof of a house as he stared at a golden pair of zodiac libra-shaped earrings and a silver hoop that was tied to his chain. He gave a melancholy stare as he remembered his mother and father. He wondered what his parents would tell him if he was stuck in a hopeless situation like this. I had a feeling I'd find you here. Akane said as she unknowingly cut off Naruto's thoughts of his father and mother, why aren't you with Mika? Did you have another fight? As she asked her question Akane slid through the roof as she sat close to Naruto and heard his answer, who cares about that good for nothing idiot, T.T. Ibeo. Oh, do you want to talk about it? Akane said. Leave me alone Akane-chan. Naruto rejected rudely, and don't sit to close. Why not? Akane asked as she scooted more closely to the blonde where family is not weird or anything unless you like me. Naruto stared as he slightly blushed and scoffed, shut up, you know how I am about keeping my distance. But families shouldn't keep their distance, Akane retorted as she was now shoulder to shoulder with Naruto and made him think of the past. Attention everyone today is Christmas and today we have a new member in the family, Naruto, said the kind director as she introduced the solemn blonde child, so make him feel welcome and be on your best behavior okay. K, okay, Michaela said cheerfully, seeing the new member of the family. Naruto looked the members of the orphanage for a few seconds before turning away. Hey Ruto, my name is Michaela and I'm an orphan too so I know how you feel, I was sad at first but now I have big family, Michaela said introducing himself cheerfully to Naruto, if you like you can be a part of it. The only thing we have common is that we're orphans, my parents didn't abandon me, they were killed and I witnessed it up close, Naruto sanud. My family is dead so there's no way I'm going to be involved in another one, just so that I can get hurt again, T.T. Ibeo. Wow, that's must have been pretty hard, Mika said empathetically as he forward his hand, but starting today everything is going to get better. The sound of the bell towers rung as Naruto remembered that night at Hayakuya Orphanage and was snapped out of his flashback by Akane's voice. Well let's get going, Akane said as she had Naruto's undivided attention, Dinner's almost ready and everyone is waiting on you Mr. Moody. Come on you can be grumpy at the table. Naruto watched Akane leave through the tunnel and scoffed as he sat up and dusted his pants, I'm not grumpy, T.T. Ibeo. Naruto returned home when opened the door and as soon as he walked in he was immediately hugged by his youngest brother Taichi and crowded by Fumi and Akko. Ruto-chan. They all said cheerfully. You're late, Ruto-ni-chan. I'm starving, me, too. Naruto affectionately ruffled Taichi's light brown locks, quit huddling, you're all acting if I got lost or something. Guess what? Said Akko, a young girl with wheat colored hair and brown eyes and looked no older than nine, there's a big surprise in the kitchen. Akane is making curry, with real meat and everything, Taichi said excitedly. Is that so? Naruto said as he walked towards the kitchen where Akane was peeling a potato and asked, where did you get all this? Crazy isn't it, Akane said as she faced towards Naruto, I thought I was going to faint when Mika brought them to me. I'm excited. I never had the chance to cook such a feast before. Naruto looked at his hand as it balled into a fist, what an idiot, I should have hit him harder. Everyone sat at the table and ate the curry enthusiastically except one, Naruto. Why aren't you eating anything? You're not hungry, Fumi, a young girl with long brown hair and brown eyes who was the same age as Akko asked twice to his older sibling. Guess not, Naruto said. Akane, Kutra, 
a young boy with dark hair and brown eyes who was the same age group as Fumi and Akko, said, Today is actually my birthday. Shahiro a bespectacled girl with shoulder-length indigo hair and was only a year younger than Naruto, spoke, Well what do you know it's my birthday too. Tai Chi frowned and said, No fair, I want one. I do too, said Akko. I have no choice then, Akane beamed brightly as she stared at all the children at the table, I officially declare today everyone's birthday. The children cheered as Naruto watched the scene with a small smile. Remember to thank Mika whenever he gets home, Akane said to the children. Will do, Fumi said cheerfully as she raised her spoon. Where did Mika go? asked Tai Chi. Why isn't he here for dinner? Akko also questioned Mika's absence. Where is Mika? Shihiro asked and then looked to Naruto, do you know Ruto ni chan? Naruto looked down on his curry as he honestly confessed, um, sorry I don't know. Tai Chi ate my curry, Fumi wailed. Then Tai Chi can give up his, Akane quickly solved. Oh, no? Tai Chi cried out as all the children at the table burst into laughter. Man, why'd I always get in trouble? It was night and no doubt in Mika's mind everyone was sleeping. He entered the house and walked through the hall climbing up the ladder of the bunker where all his siblings were sleeping except Naruto which Mika quickly noticed. You stayed up, I'm touched, Mika said. I only did it because Akane-chan asked me to, idiot. Naruto terribly lied as he turned his back. Mika knew he was worried as he crawled to the bunker, don't tell me you're still angry with me. Of course not, I ate a portion of your curry so we're even, tt ibeo. No way. I'm kidding. Just so you know the kids enjoyed it, Naruto said honestly, so, what did you have to do? I mean to get the curry? Mika was taken by surprise with that question. Idiot, Naruto said as he now faced towards Mika next time we're trading my blood you got it. Come on no one wants your nasty blood, Naruto frowned at Mika's reply, making the boy to quickly smile and apologize, I'm kidding. Just forget about it, you need focus on how to defeat the vampires, just leave the rest to me. Stop it. You can take on the burden all by yourself, Naruto said as Mika listened in surprise, I'm not stupid, I know how strong the vampires are. I know defeating them is next to impossible. Mika immediately shushed Naruto as he raised index towards his face, I don't want to hear it. These kids look up to you, they hang to your every word. We can beat the fangs, we won't lose, it gives them hope sniff it gives all of us hope. Naruto looked at Mika as he emotionally rubbed his tears and said, come on let's eat some curry. They left the top bunker, Mika came in with two bowls of curry and handed it to the opposite side where Naruto sat, here, make sure you actually eat this time. No, Naruto said as he pushed the bowl away, it's yours and I don't want any. Too bad, Mika said as he stubbornly pushed the bowl back and won as Naruto let him set it on the table, this isn't a request, this is an order. Naruto was immediately riled as he slammed the table lightly, why'd I have take orders from you, tt ibeo. Mika then pulled out a flintlock pistol that immediately startled his sibling, because if you don't keep your strength up, you won't kill as many fangs with this bad boy. Michaela handed the pistol to Naruto and continued, so you're not done until you lick the bowl clean. Wow, Naruto said as he examined the model and wait. You think that's impressive then check this out, Naruto then stared at Michaela as he pulled out some sort of map and continued. Ta-da, it's a map of the city and it even shows where the exit is located. Hang on, Naruto said, did you steal this from the noble? Yep. Hey, Naruto let a small smirk show as he finally took a bite out his curry. Farid's mansion is as big as a castle. It took forever to find anything useful until now, Michaela informed as he took another bite from his curry. The great Michaela doesn't give his blood away for a pat in the back, he gets his dues. Naruto stared dryly as he chewed curry, too busy to make a witty retort. Anyway, that all stops today, Michaela said excitedly as he leaned forward, we're leaving tonight. Naruto was immediately caught off guard as his curry slid off his spoon and was about lecture him until Michaela cut him off, I already know what you're going to say but don't worry. I've got it all planned out, just leave it to the great Michaela laughs. What about the virus? Naruto asked as he continued to fire his worries, we could die as soon we reach outside. We won't get infected as long as we're 13 and younger, remember, Michaela answered confidently and he asked Naruto, do you remember how old we are now? Of course I do, we're 12. 
Then that gives us a whole year so let's think about it after that. As long as the Hayakuya family sticks together then everything will turn out to be just fine. Even if you say that Michaela, Naruto said his worries, this all sounds too risky to just go out and about. What are you doing? Why are you still awake? Akane asked as she rubbed the sleep from her eye then she noticed Michaela was sitting at the table. Oh, welcome back, Mika. You ate. So what do you think of the curry, Ruto-chan? Naruto stared at her for a couple of seconds before he gave a big grin and said, Okay Mika, let's do it. Michaela got up from his chair excitedly and said, Great, let's go, Akane, go and wake everybody up. Why? Akane asked as she watched Mika take out the bowls and left to the kitchen sink in a hurry and then felt Naruto's hand on her shoulder. Because it's time we said goodbye to this city. Two minutes passed and Michaela opened the door to their house and checked streets for fangers only to find none. Okay, it's clear. They all walked out of the house and Naruto gave a quick scan to the back to see anyone lurking but was met in silence and moved forward to the group keeping a close eyed map as they hid in the covers of the streets and he pointed the destination to a bridge located at the very top as the orphans followed high lead. Another couple of good minutes passed as the Hayakuya orphans were now walking on the bridge and as they sneaked, the children got a good view Sanguinum City and stared at awe before moving forward to the tunnel that led to the sewer. We are we going anyway? said Akko and was continued the line questioned by her two younger siblings Fumi and Tai Chi respectively. I don't like the dark, are we going to get in trouble for being outside? Don't worry it's fine, it won't be long until we say, bye bye, to this world, Mika said in an assuring tone to his siblings. Huh, why? asked Fumi as she was followed by Kutra with the questions. I don't get it, where are we going? Tell them Ruto, Mika said as he followed the directions of the map. Naruto happily obliged as he spoke, we're going back to the human world and guess what, we can eat curry every day. Really? asked Fumi excitedly. Then how about Salisbury steak? asked Tai Chi, he couldn't get his answer to his question as Michaela covered his mouth and shushed the entire group as they took cover, hearing the sound footsteps come closer. The two sentinels looked through the hall that led to the waterway tunnel, they thought they heard noise for sure but immediately went off and ignored it completely, except one who immediately faked his absence and walked towards the hall and turned left only to see no sign of life and went back to his previous duties. They heard the sentinel leave for good and Mika sighed as he slipped out the bars followed by his siblings and finally making it through the grand hall that led towards the exit. Michaela checked the map and confirmed, once we get through here, we're out. Naruto smiled as he looked towards his family and said, all right, we're almost there. The children cheered happily, excited to go out and see the human world. Michaela folded the map and looked at Naruto and said, let's go. Yeah, it's time to leave this dump behind, tt Ibeo, Naruto said he walked forward followed by his family. Everything looked hopeful but all good things must come to an end. Oh ho, hello my little lambs, Farid appeared at the side of the exit, walking in the same pompous manner, I was beginning to wonder if you were even going to show up. The Hayakuya orphans stared in fear as they were caught, making Farid to easily savor the moment more than he should. Ah, just look at those faces, Farid said as he began inform the little lambs, I love the expressions that humans make when their hopes have been dashed away. It's so intoxicating that I can't stop playing this game. What game? Mika said in distraught as he looked at the map one more time, but a blinding gust immediately blew it away as they now stared at Farid who was now sucking on Akko's blood. What a pity, died so quickly, Farid said as he quickly dropped the lifeless corpse on the floor. Akko. Naruto said, as his distraught was transformed into blind rage as he pulled out the pistol and fired, die, you bastard. The bullet flew as Farid easily dodged it and disappeared from Naruto's point of view. Well, well, I believe that's my pistol, Naruto turned from behind spotting Farid as he began to strut confidently and praised. Sneaking it past me takes the cunning that only few possess, I'm impressed Mika, I've never expected to be this entertained. Michaela didn't bother to acknowledge Farid's praise as he was close to breaking, and clearly the esteemed noble saw through this and thus spoke. Does that flame of yours need rekindling? Farid asked as Michaela was now paying attention. What if I told you that map you stole was the genuine article? All you have to do is to make it past me and you'll be back to your world. It will be hard for me to chase you once you made it outside. The question is whether or not you can make it there. Get going. 
Naruto ordered as he was prepared to sacrifice himself for his family, he won't let the same thing happen to his previous one, but the Hayakuya orphans were to frightened move until Naruto raised the pistol in the air and fired aggressively, move it, tt ibeo. The children immediately ran towards the exit as they cried out in despair except Mikayla who stood there, not wanting leave Naruto alone. Same goes to you Mika. Naruto yelled as he launched towards Farid with a knife on his right and the pistol on the left, he unleashed the knife in a piercing motion towards Farid's gut, no way you're getting past me. I beg to differ, Farid said slyly as he lopped the boy's right arm clean, now watch in despair as I kill your family. Naruto fell of balance as he turned around watching Farid butcher the second sibling. Shihiro. Naruto yelled in despair as she fell down lifelessly to the floor and at momentum Farid went for his next victim, Kutra. I'm begging you, please. Michaela desperately pleaded as he saw Tai Chi's blood spill the floor followed by Fumi's, leave them alone. Akane run. Naruto yelled as he pulled himself up to the ground and fired a bullet at Farid only for him to sidestep the shot. Naruto don't interrupt, let me savor the miseries you used for everything you hoped for, Farid cruelly spoke before he swiped his hand and instantly killed the frightened Akane. Naruto and Michaela were now the last orphans standing from the massacre. It's okay Ruto. Don't forget, the two of us are family, Michaela spoke in a tone of resignation as Naruto stared at him in despair, giving Michaela the chance to swipe the gun from Naruto as he charged towards Farid. Mika, don't, Naruto cried out as he once tried to reach out but failed as Michaela already set part the distance. Ha ha ha, oh sweet Michaela I'll miss your company the most and the lovely meals, Farid said ecstatically as he swiped his left parrying the gun's aim and impaled Michaela in the chest where his heart was located. Yet oddly Michaela did not die as he once again tried to shoot Farid only to meet the same fate as Naruto's arm. Run. Ruto. Michaela said dropping the gun while his arm flew, spilling blood. Farid watched gleefully at his sorrowful expression which doomed him as Naruto picked up the gun with his only arm and aimed the gun at the noble in point-blank range. This is for my family. Naruto said softly as he pulled the trigger, making the bullet enter Farid's cranium. The noble fell as his arm slipped out of Michaela's chest. Naruto stared at the corpse before firing extra rounds. This is for Akko. This is for Chihiro, Kutra, Taichi the youngest, Fumi the innocent. And this for Akane the one who truly took care of us. Ruto, stop it. He's dead. Michaela said making Naruto's blind rage stop and immediately went to his side and yelled, Mika. Hang in there please. Go, Ruto, leave me here. Don't be stupid. We're going back together, you hear me? Don't let us die for nothing. Please live. SS shut up. You're fine, Naruto said as he tried to drag Michaela but couldn't move his body due to his newfound disability. You're going to make it. I won't let my family die again. As Naruto did his best to drag Michaela, the vampire's footsteps were beginning to get louder by the second. This caused Michaela to roughly push Naruto away from him and yelled, Just go you idiot, promise me that you'll live. Naruto stared as his tears slipped from his eyes, without a second word he turned his back and ran toward the exit. As Michaela saw Naruto leave his sight, he rested his head and spoke softly, I'm sorry for making you bear this pain again, Ruto. Naruto didn't know how long he ran or much blood spilled from his missing limb. All he knew is that he yelled and stumbled pathetically as he reached the light of the tunnel. It was snowing and Naruto saw Kyoto, a sight that he thought he would never see, instead in his sleep. He took light steps as he treaded in the snow, his hollow eyes scanning his surroundings as his blood trailed. Good he's here, the prophecy esteemed Lieutenant Colonel Gurren Ichinos, followed closely by his retainers Shigur and Sayuri as they tread to the snow covering the distance between the young survivor and themselves. It was foretold that we would come into contact with one of the test subjects from Hayakuya Labs. Naruto turned around and stared at the group hollowly, showing them his missing limb as it was dyeing the snow in the color of crimson. Gurren eyes widened and quickly took action as Naruto dropped lifelessly on the snow. Shit. Hey, don't die. Gurren quickly checked his pulse only to find none. Shigur, help me restart his heart and Sayuri called the doctor. Humans are so interesting underscore chapter one beyond the throne four years later gaha awakened from his nightmare naruto gasped for air after all the four years that had passed through his life the death of his second family still haunted him till this very day 
He gripped his missing limb as he concentrated on his heart rate and steadied his breathing. Clear as day, the blonde thought as he remembered the fond memories of his past, if only. No it's too late to live in regrets after all I promise that I'll live, yet I'm sucking pretty badly. As he calmed Naruto took of the sheets of the bed and idly ruffled his hair as he left his room and went to the bathroom across the hall. His hand grabbed the doorknob and jostled it open. He took a shower with his chosen attire already laid out for him. Naruto finished showering and had already put his school uniform on, taking the moment to look at himself in the mirror. He changed throughout the four years as his blonde locks became tame, yet remained as natural spikes. His blue eyes were bright and round as ever. His round baby face that he had over the past four years slimmed and transformed into a strong jawline, giving him a strong and roguish appeal. He made a few faces before brushing his teeth sparkly white. Naruto slid the door open as he walked to the balcony and grabbed his orange watering can and began to water his small garden of plants. As he finished refreshing the pots, Naruto went inside and retrieved a black case that was under his bed and opened it to reveal mechanical prosthetic arm. It was obsidian black with neon green highlights decorated over it, despite preferring the color orange, TT Ibeo. He rolled his right sleeve as he grabbed his prosthetic and attached it to his limb, connecting itself to the nervous system and brain. He adjusted his grip and played around as he rotated the wrist several times before he halted and pressed the button located in his forearm that instantly casted an illusion that cloaked his prosthetic to deceptively look like a real arm, thanks to Norito's illusions. Now that he was ready, Naruto grabbed his school bag and headed out of the door of his apartment and went out to face his suspension by going to Second Shibuya High, aka school. Naruto's own personal hellhole. Nine hours passed, it was the last period and Naruto wondered if he should have gutted himself when he had the chance as the teacher lectured. This is bullshit, just because I broke an order just to save another private doesn't automatically make it fair for me to get suspended of duty, Naruto thought as he drummed his pencil irritably and said out loud, I hope Gurren has a terrible day at the office. Hey, Hayakuya Naruto, what are you mumbling about? The teacher said as he was rudely interrupted in the middle of his lecture, Do you have something to say to the class? If you do then let's hear it. Naruto stared dryly as he rudely scoffed at the teacher and turned to face the window. What's with that attitude? So far I've been indulgent because you just transferred to this school, but if you keep this attitude up, I'll have you suspended. How about you make that into an expulsion? Naruto said in an upbeat tone as he raised himself from his chair excitedly. Come on teach just say the magic words and I will humbly leave this place, T.T. Ibeo. How dare you? The teacher said before he threw the book away and pointed at him at a dramatic fashion, enough, I won't have you mocking me in front of the class, sit down and pay attention. Naruto was about to take his eraser and throw it at the teacher to force his expulsion but felt a tap on the back and turned around seeing a cute petite girl that caught his eye. She had grayish purple hair pinned up at the back with a purple bow with side braids and orange brown eyes. What, do you have something to say? Naruto rudely asked. The girl in question lifted her notebook but before she could show him the contents the blonde immediately pushed the notebook down and said, Sorry, I appreciate your feelings but I don't have time for a love confession, T.T. Ibeo. Shinoa in all her life never expected to be in a situation as bizarre and funny as this as she raised an eyebrow and smiled wirily, once again raised the notebook to show to Naruto what she actually wrote. Naruto didn't seem the harm in reading a love confession, after all he was sadly still going reject her feelings. I'm Hiragi Shinoa. The army appointed me as your surveillance officer. As Naruto read those lines he had the decency to look embarrassed as he made himself look like a total fool in front of a cute girl over a massive assumption. Shinoa brought the notebook down as she wrote again and showed Naruto the newly written message. If your actions seem incooperative, I will report you to the army and extend your suspension. No way! Naruto exclaimed as he slammed Shinoa's table. That's it, one more outburst and I'm sending you straight! The teacher yelled but was rudely cut off as Naruto cursed another comment. This sucks! T.T. Ibeo. Let me finish, teacher yelled again as he threw chalk piece to the ground. Start cooperating, Shinoa finally spoke as she tapped her notebook with her pencil. Naruto looked at her and then the teacher before he sighed and sat on his seat as he grumbled incoherent words. I should also point out that your suspension will remain in effect until you successfully made a friend, Shinoa informed as Naruto stared at her in disbelief, causing the girl smile slyly, 
you heard right. So play nice and be a good student. Naruto laid his head on the desk as he exasperated his groans. He closed his eyes and drifted into his memories of the past. How's your arm? Asked Gurren as he sat by the chair next to the patient, waiting silently for his response. Naruto looked at his prosthetic arm as he pressed the command keys located in his forearm while he read the instruction manual and admitted, it's a bit slow. But I'm grateful for what you did. Save your thanks, Gurren said before he looked at the boy, I'll get you a better and stronger arm. Want that cost money? Ha ha ha. You shouldn't worry about troublesome things as money right now. Gurren quickly dismissed as he moved forward to the conversation, after all you have other questions in your mind. Yeah I do, the blonde youth admitted as he stared at his savior and asked, how is anyone around this place still walking and alive? Everyone on the surface died. That's what vamps told you, I guess I would have done the same if I were in their shoes, Gurren stated admittedly before he answered. Well it's true that the virus reduced the world's population about 90% and thanks to the trumpet of the apocalypse we have bizarre looking monsters roaming the earth, but it will take more than that to wipe out mankind. Our resurrection is underway. Resurrection? Yep and that's not all, we have plans that our organizations ends up on top. We're going to take back the earth and gather humanity's remnants under one banner, said Gurren in his best charismatic voice. That's a nice dream. Naruto said honestly and asked the question that ran in his mind the most, but what does this have to do with me? I'm just a kid who's lucky to even survive. You're a kid that's going to play an important role one day, Gurren said cryptically as he offered his hand, Naruto, tell me do you W.A. Pires? Hearing that question made Naruto's mind boil in rage and loathsome but it didn't change anything, he was still in this as hell of a reality and alone. He almost felt his existence disappear until Gurren asked him that question. I don't want revenge on the vampires, I want them to remember me. The sound of the bell rudely waked him from his dream as his lone eyes glazed towards his surroundings as his classmates got up from their chairs and left for home. He saw the last pair leave as they conversed, I'm skipping practice today. K, the girl said as she followed, let's get ice cream on the way home. Naruto sighed as he was finally alone and had the classroom all to him at least that's what he thought. Wait up. Mind if I come along, I could really use a cone right now, Naruto frowned as he lifted his head of the table and stared at Shinoa annoyingly, as she continued to speak, you just missed a golden opportunity to make some new friends. Naruto stared at her dryly and pointed rudely, first of all don't tell me what to do and second of all making friends is a waste of time since I won't be seeing them anymore, when I will be back in the army again killing Fang and taking names. There's that famous attitude I've heard so much about. Shinoa said as she delved further into Naruto's bio, according to Lieutenant Colonel Gurren you avoid social interaction because you lost your family, you're too afraid to engage other people. You fear making connections or letting anyone get close to you, because you're afraid you may lose them. It sounds lonely, don't you want a girlfriend or a boy? The sound wood splintering caught Shinoa's ears as she turned to see Naruto, he looked very pissed off for he was the perpetrator of the damaged desk. He got up from his chair as he overshadowed Shinoa's short stature, standing close to her personal space. Here's some trivia about me. My biological family were gunned down in front of me and the family you mentioned was the second, Naruto informed to the petite girl as he continued, so what I'm trying to say is, you're right, I am trying to run away from my feelings. Cause going through that pain again isn't worth the risk. Never took you as that much of a coward, Shinoa honestly spoke. Naruto gave her a bitter smile, honestly, the noble that found us trying to escape to the human world. The first thing that screamed to my mind was to run away but I was too busy playing the hero and paid the price of being someone I wasn't. Naruto picked his bag as Shinoa stared at his retreating back and asked one more question, if you're this broken then why are you fighting? As Naruto was about to make it to the door he answered, because I'm a moron, tt ebao. Underscore. What are you doing? Naruto asked as she watched Shinoa put on her shoes, I thought our conversation was over already. Take a hike and beat it, tt ebao. Sorry no can do. I am your army surveillance officer after all, Shinoa replied as she then informed Naruto with more information, any violation of army guidelines will be reported. Geez, thanks for the support, tt ebao, Naruto spoke dryly in sarcasm. Could you please stop? Stop what? We're just asking you to be a pal and lend us some money to buy some snacks, 
Naruto and Shinoa's conversation was cut short as they saw a student being pushed down by a typical group of bullies, is that a problem wimp? Without a moment of hesitation Naruto dropped his bag and started to walk forward but was grabbed by his uniform as he looked back to hear what Shinoa had to say this time. Oh I should have mentioned this before, fighting civilians is prohibited and will extend you suspension. Naruto stared at her emotionlessly, telling her silently that it didn't mean a damn thing to him. He turned his back to her resumed his walk, with the intention of kicking ass. Huh? The group of delinquents noticed the transfer student walk up to them, the leader Yamanaka Satoshi spoke thuggishly, you got a problem blondie? Hey, this guy is just as short as Yoichi, pointed Teruomi as he chewed his gum annoyingly close to Naruto's face, bet this bastard one of those hero types. Look at him, I bet he's scared shitless, Yuji taunted. Satoshi sneered as he saw Naruto's emotionless expression and said, after we're done beating your face in, you can be our new errand boy. Naruto finally smirked and spoke, okay then, military brutality coming sunny side up. Huh? Was Satoshi's intelligent response, his v-zone was quickly engulfed by Naruto's fist making him fall hard on the floor. Teruomi and Yuji stared dumbfounded as Satoshi collapsed to the ground with his nose now leaking blood. You bastard. Teruomi roared as he unleashed a poor right hook that was easily halted by Naruto's forearm, giving the blonde the freedom to release consecutive left jabs to his venerable face. Naruto's assault was halted halfway. Yuji slipped his arms underneath the blonde's armpits and locked his hands behind Naruto's neck, locking in the full Nelson. Teruomi rested his hand on the lockers as he sobbed his face before he walked forward, ready to get his revenge on Naruto. Hold him still Yuji! Teruomi ordered as he cracked his knuckles. Naruto smirked and slammed his foot on Yuji's toes, making the boy yelp as he lowered his head easily walking into the blonde's headbutt. As he was released, Naruto quickly grabbed Teruomi's Gakuren and threw him over to Yuji's side causing them to slam towards the locker. Yuji's body slumped as he lost conscious while Teruomi bounced back dazed until he was knocked unconscious by Naruto's jump kick, as he expected the result of the outcome. Dynamic entry, T.T. Ibeo, Naruto softly spoke as he smirked in victory. Naruto walked away as he picked his bag with Shinoa looking at him with a sly smile before commenting, military brutality, seriously? Hey, you giggled when I said that, so no sassy comments from you, T.T. Ibeo. Shinoa laughed and mocked, or what, T.T. Ibeo? Naruto growled as his face heated in embarrassment and threw his hands in air in an exaggerated manner as he left. Forget it, T.T. Ibeo. Shinoa cheerfully followed him as she hummed happily. The hearing of the machine ejecting out the drink was immediately retrieved by the blonde. He placed the drink in his bag as he looked at Shinoa, want one? Shinoa gushed as she placed her upon her cheek and playfully said, Oh my, is this your way of asking me out on a date? On second thought forget I asked, Naruto said as he pulled the pop tab and took a sip. I found you. Naruto and Shinoa turned around seeing a breathless youth standing a centimeter shorter than Naruto with disheveled brown hair and olive green eyes. Who are you? Naruto said as he stared him. The boy let a disheartened gasp as Shinoa decided to refresh Naruto's memory, he's that Yoichi kid you saved from those punks who were bullying him. Oh that? Naruto said as he ruffled his locks sheepishly, sorry I didn't get a good look at you. It's okay. Yoichi quickly forgive and then clarified to Shinoa, they weren't bullying me. Naruto looked at him in disbelief, yeah right, so it just conveniently happens to be that their fist is magnetically attracted to your face, T.T. Ibeo. No it's true, Yoichi defended, they really aren't bullying me. What? Yeah, Yoichi confirmed as he explained, you see I have favor that I need to ask of Yamanaka and well getting on his good side isn't exactly easy. Which one was Yamanaka? Naruto asked Shinoa, causing the girl to look at him disbelievingly. Seriously? You really are a dumb blonde? Naruto's right hand hovered on Shinoa's head, resisting the urge to crush her for her remark. Yamanaka was the first guy you knocked out in the fight, Yoichi answered. That guy? What kind of representative does he have if you're asking for a favor? Well you see I failed the Imperial Demon Army entrance exam. I've always wanted to join them but Yamanaka. He passed them in flying colors, Yoichi said admiringly making Naruto seriously suspicious. He's even considered in joining the Moon Demon Company. Okay now that's just clearly bullshit, 
Naruto said colorfully as he continued firing, if he's that good then he would have stood a good chance against me, especially be able to dodge my fist to boot, tt ebeo. But it's true. Yoichi defended once again. Naruto looked at Yoichi and scoffed. Okay fine maybe he is, maybe. But what do you want from him anyway, tt ebeo. I was hoping if he has some connections if he knows the right people then maybe I could get another shot at the entrance exam, Yoichi said hopefully until his mood changed solemn. I know I'm not much of a soldier and there's no place for weaklings in the army, but. But what? Naruto said as he was interested in Yoichi's plea. If I join, I can get revenge for my sister, revenge for your sister? My sister was killed by a vampire, she was trying to protect me. Yoichi revealed as he remembered the blood of her sister spill the carpet, I froze, I wanted to save her but I couldn't, hence so I'm here. You don't look like a guy who's walking on the path of revenge, Naruto bluntly stated, even if you don't look the part you're still wasting your sister's sacrifice, die now and she will truly have died in regret. But, no buts, Naruto said as he looked at Yoichi straight in the eye, even though I'm in no position tell you this but don't join the army, especially with an unclear mentality like yours. Bedside's a crybaby like you will only get in the way, what the army needs are better soldiers not another body to fill in a bag. Naruto walked away from him but had to sidestep as Yoichi tried to tackle him, an action that Naruto wasn't surprised about. Let me guess Yamanaka ordered you to attack me, Naruto stayed clearly in conviction. You say you want to join the army but you can't even control your own actions to do it. Let me tell you something Yoichi, those who don't move themselves will forever be stuck on the ground by their own roots. Yoichi looked down at the ground like a child who was being lectured. His eyes began to moist as his tears were soon released, never once has he ever cursed his weakness as Naruto resumed in walking away. B-O-O-O-M. A thunderous explosion startled the students with smoke engulfing their immediate surroundings. The sirens blared as the faculty teacher's voice was heard in the speakers. Emergency alert. This is a crucial message for all students and faculty members, please be advised. A vampire has escaped out of containment from the nearby bio-research facility. Army personnel will arrive soon. All students evacuate the area in a calm and orderly fashion. Why would a vampire come here? Shinoa questioned as this random event unfolded. If it's in the school then we're good as dead, Yuichi said in distraught. Can it you too? I'm trying to hear, Naruto said as he focused his hearing. Vampires regain their strength by drinking blood please do not approach the vampire under any circumstances. Both of you get out of here quickly. Shinoa said in a no-nonsense manner, I'll call the Demon Moon Company and take care of them. No, Naruto said resolutely, I'm a soldier of the army it's my duty to protect these people, I'll go on ahead and keep the vampire busy from causing casualties. You can't go there alone, it's suicide, Yoichi reasoned with him. He's right you'll be practically defenseless against it, Shinoa quickly supported it. I have a sword and a pistol in my locker, Naruto revealed to the group. Now shut up and call Gurren to hurry up his lazy ass. Naruto wait. Shinoa yelled as Naruto ran towards the school, that idiot. Getting back to the school was a hassle for Naruto due to having to go through the mob of students that were evacuating the area. It was an action that he should have followed but the blonde wasn't the type to sit around and wait for help, if he could do something then he would immediately take action. After all he didn't want anyone to suffer the same tragedy as him by the wrath of the vampires. As Naruto ran through the halls and quickly moved to the second set of stairs, he immediately had to halt his course as he saw a pair of girls huddled together in fear. He wasn't going to hide his annoyance for this situation as he immediately nagged at them. Hey, get the hell out of school, TT Ibeo. Naruto yelled as the girls took notice of him, move it, do you guys want to die? The girls immediately squeaked as they pathetically got off the floor and ran away as Naruto watched them fade away in the background before hearing the door shut. The blonde let out a sigh and resumed his movements as he found his locker and quickly entered the combination code and opened it, revealing his katana and Farid's stolen pistol. Naruto grabbed the pistol as he hid it in his drawers and grabbed the katana and hung it behind his back before closing his locker. Kya! Naruto immediately bolted towards the voice of the scream as he had to regrettably leave some of the unconscious students behind as he reached and entered the classroom. It wasn't hard to spot the vampire as she lustfully licked her lips and her red blood eyes eyed at her victim's neck with desire. Her hair was disheveled and light pink that matched her pale skin and wore the tattered prison uniform. 
It's you. Naruto turned to his left spotting Yamanaka quivering in the corner and ignored him as he had other important things to do. The vampire took notice of the human and growled as he had the nerve to walk up to her and interrupt her meal. Naruto unsheathed his katana with his left as he took a loose stance that showed many holes in his form. Shao, hello. Naruto spoke in fluent Italian, e, passato molto tempo da quando ho visto un vampire, it's been a long time since I seen a vampire. The female vampire recognized the language and she let a haughty laugh and spoke at livestock's tongue, oh mio, sono i giapponesi che impagano leuto degli italiani ora, oh my. Are the Japanese employing help from the Italians now? No, e nato in America, ma sono stato cresciuto qui. No I was born in America, but I was raised here, Naruto revealed as his tone changed to Japanese. Well it was a nice chat but it's time to for you to die. Human trash, the vampire sneered as she leapt dodging Naruto's immediate horizontal slash. Naruto watched as she nimbly landed at the desk and used it as a makeshift spring to launch herself towards Naruto with a piercing hand strike which made the blonde to quickly dodge. As time slowed the vampire quickly spun in the air and released a roundhouse to slam the livestock trash to the board but her kick was halted as the human grabbed her leg with his free arm. Cold, the female vampire thought as she felt his vice grip crush her leg by sheer force. She could not cry out her pain as the blonde maliciously slammed her to the ground like a ragdoll. Naruto let out a roar as he threw the vampire to the end of the classroom, as she slammed the wall the blonde quickly followed by throwing his katana like a javelin. The katana pierced the vampire's flesh as she was now pinned to the wall like some sick display. But the soldier's ruthlessness did not end there as he quickly followed his flying sword and unleashed a palm strike with his mechanical arm that easily allowed him to embed the blade deeper into the vampire's abdomen. Steel met flesh as Naruto unleashed a horde of consecutive right jabs to her faces before he finished with a hook and pulled the sword out, letting the vampire tumble down face first to the floor as her blood splattered the floor. Naruto was about to strike his sword down in a guillotine motion on the vampire's head but was halted as he heard a whimper. Help, someone please help, the immobile girl softly cried out in pain. Naruto immediately pointed his sword at Yamanaka and ordered, Yamanaka get this girl out of here and get her to safety, hurry. What? Yamanaka said in stunned fear. You're a soldier candidate right? Get a grip and help her already. BB but I was lying, Yamanaka confessed as Narulif. What the hell did you just say? I thought if I told everyone that then they would fear me, Yamanaka confessed as he quickly cowered under Naruto's pissed off glare. Seriously. I knew the Demon Moon Company consideration was bull but I was hoping at least you were a soldier. Naruto lectured as his emotions got the best of him. You know what I don't care anymore just get up and help that girl, soldier or not, T.T. Ibeo. Yamanaka let out a whimper as Naruto yelled at him and as his eyes took a glance at the vampire, he immediately yelled, Naruto watch out. Quadruple A Ag. The blonde yelled out as the vampire bit his leg and immediately suckled in his blood for a good amount of seconds until Naruto brought his blade down forcing the vampire to release and rolled her way out to safety as she sprinted towards her immobile prey. Naruto's leg throbbed in pain, he felt if he just walked into a bear trap. He glared viciously as the vampire sneered in victory. Thanks for the meal but it's time for me to head for the main course, the vampire said as she arrogantly pulled the poor girl's hair and continued, you may be strong but you won't be able to defeat me in my full power as I regain my strength when I drink her blood. Just as the vampire was about to feast, Naruto quickly pulled out his pistol but before he could even pull the trigger he heard a familiar cry. No. Out of nowhere Yoichi came through the door and slammed the female vampire down in full throttle. Naruto's eyes widened in surprise by Yoichi's display of bravery, as the brunette questioned, are you okay? Yoichi. Naruto said in a whisper of awe before it turned into serious as he saw the vampire up in its feet. You miserable little wretch. The vampire spewed balefully as she was about to claw Yoichi's chest but let a gasp of surprise as a bullet entered her skin. Several shots were fired at the stunned vampire before one finally entered her skull and made her topple to the ground as her blood once again dirtied the floor. Yoichi watched in surprise as the vampire fell and looked at Naruto who stood front of him smiling. Yoichi, good job that was impressive, Naruto praised as he continued, but wipe your tears you're supposed to cry when you're happy not scared. Yoichi did exactly what Naruto told as he wiped his tears and said, Thank you Naruto it really means a lot, 
but that's what friends are for right? Naruto was taken by surprise by that he wasn't sure how to act or find the words but for some reason his voice acted upon its own and said, yeah you got that right. Yoichi beamed brightly as he hugged Naruto, yay, we're friends. Oi, don't get physical on me, tt ibeo, Naruto said as he pried Yoichi off his personal space and asked, come on since you're the only tough guy here, I want you to carry the poor girl as I get the idiot Yamanaka off his scared ass and leave the school to safety. You got it Naruto-kun, Yoichi said as he fully placed his trust in his friend. Yamanaka get up, Naruto barked, it's over, we're leaving this place, tt ibeo. Why why you won? Yamanaka said in a hint of awe and fear but it immediately leaned on fear as he saw a shadow loomed behind Naruto and once again yelled, Naruto behind you. Naruto turned heel with his pistol aimed but was knocked away by the offending hand which Yoichi managed to fumble dangerously in his hand. The blonde saw up close of the, should, have been dead vampire as she tackled him viciously towards the window. Naruto saw behind him and cursed, shit, 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 shit. The window broke and the sense of weightlessness felt brief as Naruto felt every sharp glass embedded in his skin but his pain did not stop there as he landed through the thick branches of the trees and later the bushes. Naruto rolled out with the severed hand of the vampire he lopped off when they hit the trees and for several seconds, he was silent. Yoichi looked through the window and cried out, Naruto are you okay? Do you I look okay to you? Holy fucking shit. That hurts like hell. A g g h. That fucking bitch. Why the hell did she had to slam through the window? Yoichi. Movies lied to me. Tte Bayo. Yoichi could only let out a gasp for Naruto's pain. It was agonizing as the glass cut up Naruto pretty bad. Blood was leaking of the back of his head, his thighs and calves each had several long, but thankfully shallow, cuts. His left arm was worse as two inch pieces of glass were sticking out along with the forearm that had a deep cut in it. While Naruto cared little about it, his uniform was in shredded and rapidly dyed red from his own blood. Even through all the pain he was feeling the blonde was thankful that he managed to survive the fall. This is what you get you arrogant trash, the vampire said as she walked out of the bushes, since you're bleeding all over I guess I can't deny myself of how rich your blood taste, after all I deserve a good snack. Naruto yanked the vampire's severed limb of his collar as he pathetically got up and used his scabbard as a makeshift cane while he held his sword in position. The great Naruto doesn't give his blood away for a pat in the back, he gets his dues. Naruto told boldly at his current situation, deep down he smiled as he remembered Mika. You humans are always the same, your false bravado will only get you killed, the vampire said before she lunged at the blonde soldier. Yoichi, shoot her now, Naruto yelled as the sound of gunfire filled the air. The bullet that Yoichi fired fatefully met the vampire's skin as it abruptly stopped her movements. This gave Naruto time to once again strike his sword down in a guillotine motion. Her last arm dropped and her blood sprayed like a leaking fountain, it dyed the grassy field crimson red. A vertical slash then cloaked her vision, feeling the sharp and cold sting as her eyes were taken away from her. The vampire scrambled all over the floor as the pain registered, due to losing blood, her strength and healing was rapidly degrading to a low point. She cursed and howled, you bastard. How dare you do this to me? You will not get an easy death from me. You hear me you will not. I think he heard you the first time. The cursed blade plunged through the vampire's heart. B but how? H how do you have a cursed weapon? The vampire choked out causing Gurin to express his disapproval. How the mighty have fallen, you're pathetic, Gurin said as he immediately pulled out Mihiru no Yo, allowing the vampire to turn to ash and looked at his troublesome student, and speaking of pathetic, what were you thinking? How did you plan to kill it with a normal blade and no enchantment? Or were you hoping I would come and save your sorry ass? Naruto growled at Gurren's rapid fire question as he retorted, Oh please I won the fight, you just took advantage of it and dealt the killing blow on the bloodsucker. Besides you sure did took your sweet time. Where were you? Doing your nails again. I just saved your sorry excuse of an ass, at least be appreciative about it. Gurren yelled as his demeanor easily broke. Oh I am. Naruto clarified as he spread his arms, I'm just too busy bleeding all over the field. Hello. Call the ambulance already, tt ibeo. Gurren growled as he ordered Sayuri, Sayuri call the ambulance. That's right. Listen to your master, 
Naruto taunted causing Gurren to childishly kick the pillar of Naruto's support which was his scabbard, the blonde easily tumbled down. You're right, I have to admit defeating that vampire was an impressive feat, Gurren praised as he easily ignored his previous action and walked towards his squad and turned, thanks to you the overall damage was minimal and on top off that you saved all your friends in school. So these are the members of the Demon Moon Company, Naruto thought as he saw them, whatever, I just did what I had to do that's all. Naruto then spotted Shinoa as she waved at him before she walked down the small stairs and stood behind Gurren's back. Well since I defeated a vampire you have no choice but to make me a part of the company, Nath's small steep to Gurren's side and continued, I'm ready, so stop treating me like a kid, tt Ibeo. Sorry, but I make it a strict policy to not working with lone wolves, Gurren easily retorted. Shinoa giggled as she said, that's pretty funny coming from the biggest lone wolf in the demon army. Huh, did you say something? No sir. Anyway the rules that Shinoa gave you remain the same, Naruto scowled at that as Gurren continued, if you can't make a friend in this school then I won't have you join the army. Geez. Why are you so stubborn in me trying to make friends? Naruto asked to Gurren. Oh thank goodness. Yoichi cried out as tears feel gaining everyone's attention, Hayakuya you're alright. I did what asked me to do but I'm just so glad you're okay. Naruto's private space was immediately tackled by Yoichi as he cried, making the blonde to once again do his best to pry him off, Oi! What the hell did I tell you don't get physical with me, T.T. Ibeo? Who's that? Gurren asked rudely as he saw the scene. His friend apparently or lover, Shinoa said teasingly towards the latter statement before delivering the icing on the cake, now that he's met your requirements, you have keep up your end of the bargain lieutenant colonel. Gurren turned and looked at Shinoa in shock. What, are you kidding me? Ha in your face Gurren. I'm the, before Naruto could even finish his sentence he dropped to the floor due to the mix of blood loss and his depleting adrenaline. Hayakuya. Yoichi cried out as she shook his dear friend but held no response, someone call an ambulance. I already did, Gurren said as he wondered when the annoying blonde was going to pass out. Right on time the siren wailed alerting its presence. Well time for this brad to get his stitches. Underscore. Phew, you had us worried there Ruto but I'm glad that you made a new friend. Naruto turned and looked down seeing a familiar boy with tousled and curly blonde hair and blue eyes. It was Michaela along with the rest of his family. He looked around and saw that they were at the exit of the vampire world towards the human world. What, how are you guys still? Naruto was cut off by Mika as he smiled towards him. Now we can stop worrying about you. Don't you get it we don't want you to live a life where you're a symbol of fear, you're better than that. Listen, you need to take care of your new friend, okay? The children smiled at him as they returned towards the darkness, as Michaela was the last and said, well we got to get going. Naruto's tears streamed from his eyes as he said, Mika, I promise. Michaela turned as he smiled at him letting the darkness engulf him. Gaha. Awakened from his slumber, Naruto gasped for air, as he saw Yoichi stare at him surprise. Hayakuya, thank goodness. Yoichi said joyfully as he turned to Shinoa, look Shinoa, he finally managed to wake up. It's about time, Shinoa said as she turned to face him and got up from her seat moving in to close the window. Naruto saw that he was in the hospital as he wore a gown with several bandages wrapped around his body and noticed that his prosthetic was removed. Hey have you guys seen my arm? Naruto asked them as Shinoa pulled a familiar case. She opened the latches and revealed his prosthetic making the blonde question. You're not surprised by this, are you? I read your file, remember? Shinoa reminded before she admitted, honestly though, I was still shocked to see it with my own eyes. Yeah even I was shocked, Yoichi said to the blonde, Gurren told me that you escaped from the vampire world in the cost of your own limb. You really went through so much hardship didn't you Naruto? Naruto stayed silent before he answered Yoichi, I don't think my experiences are hardships Yoichi. What do you mean? My dad once told me, if you endure any hardship then you'll become the person you wish to be, Naruto said as he grabbed his prosthetic and attached it, even though I'm struggling I'm doing my best to endure this pain. Hearing those words made Yoichi have more respect to his fellow blonde friend, as he flexed his mechanical fingers. Naruto looked over Shinoa and asked, so any good news? Shinoa gave him a charming smile as she informed, I do in fact, as of today you are officially signed to the Vampire Extermination Unit. 
Congrats Naruto, that's awesome, Yoichi supported. I almost forgot, Shinoa said as she looked at Yoichi, your enlistment was also accepted. Welcome to the army Yoichi. The two of you made quite the impression on your comrades. You put your lives on the line and fought bravely, for people you don't even know of. Gentlemen welcome to Moon Demon Company. Shinoa put her hand forward as she said as Yoichi joined the group hand, from now on you're one of us. Come on, bring it in buddy, Yoichi encouraged towards Naruto, who blushed embarrassingly. Geez, this is embarrassing, Naruto voiced as he put his hand forward, I hope you guys are happy, TT Ibeo. Is that him? Yeah, he's the one that took down that vampire. I heard from Yamanaka he beat the vampire with his bare hands. No way. Yes way, I even heard he threw her out of the window. Wait, wasn't that the other way around? That doesn't make sense he wouldn't survive a fall like that. Maybe he's a super soldier. Damn it can this isn't a comic book or one of your stupid theories. But it could be. Oh boy, here he goes again. He sighed as he heard the rumors circulate around him as lunch period started. Some people believed in this others believe in that or his favorite rumor that was made by some romance-obsessed girls or guys. He didn't judge, he was a dampier fighting his vampire kind like the famed protagonist D from Vampire Hunter D. Naruto resisted the urge to snort at that ridiculous assumption when he heard it the first time. He peered towards the window hoping to relieve his boredom and finally wonder. Why is he still in school? Excuse me, you're Hayakuya Naruto right? Naruto shifted his attention away from his cloud of thoughts as a feminine voice spoke his name and turned his line of sight away from the window and occupied itself anew to the spoken female. She was quite cute, as her sweet smile quickly made Naruto relax and smiled back in kind. She had dark glossy hair that matched her light gray eyes. She kept her hair slicked back and held back by her hairpin and despite that she allowed two locks hung above her brow. Unlike most girls who wore the typical sailor fuku she wore the alternative uniform that consisted of a simple white dress shirt with tie that was underneath a gray sweater vest and a typical skirt and mid-length stockings. Yeah I am, Naruto responded politely to the girl, what is it that I could help you with? Oh you're not helping me, the girl responded as put her fist around her hips as she continued. The girl you saved from that vampire was my friend, I just wanted to come by and say thanks. Naruto let small smile grace his features as he humbly replied, I was only doing what I thought was right, no need for the thanks. Well if you insist, by the way my name is Seizuri Hibari, nice to meet you. The girl introduced as she offered her hand which Naruto gladly shook, oh, before I forget. The girl you saved from the vampire, my friend wants to meet you. I'm down with that. Where is she? At the top of the school building, she isn't hard to miss. Geez, that sounds like a cliche love confession, especially in this day and age. Naruto faked his smile as he rose from his chair, then I guess I'll meet her there. You don't mind if I follow you? Hibari suggested to the blonde. I don't mind actually, more the merrier I guess, ya yeah, know. Cool, Hibari replied as she walked out of the classroom with Soldier, going through the halls as she asked. So how did you beat the vampire? You actually want to know about that? Can't help myself, I'm very curious. Well some of the rumors are pretty accurate, ya yeah, know. Even the part where you're actually a dampier? Okay that rumor is bullshit. Whth that one? Naruto asked. Oh they said you pummeled the vampire multiple times and also Yamanaka said you actually caught her when the thing blitzed you, so a person theorized that maybe you're a half vampire or some sort of superhero. Hibari informed to the blonde as they strolled the stairs, one set away from their destination. It's called honing your skills, TT Ibeo, Naruto said as he opened the door that lead to the rooftop, the girl wasn't hard to miss. She was cute and attractive in a girl next door kind of way. Average height and yet modest curves that gave her a feminine grace. Well I'll wait outside, Hibari said as she closed the door before giving her friend a look of encouragement. Naruto got close to the girl standing centimeters apart, the girl blushed at his closeness as her light brown eyes darted away from eye contact. Thanks for coming, the girl finally spoke as she nervously played with her letter which she hid from her back, you may not remember but I'm the one you saved yesterday I can't thank you enough for that. It was nothing really, Naruto replied as he tousled his hair awkwardly. I know this is out of the blue but, will you take this letter? It would mean so much to me. The girl said bravely as she handed out her confession to him. 
Despite knowing that it was a confession Naruto really couldn't fight his small blush that rose from his cheeks, thanks I really appreciate this but. Naruto never got to finish his sentence as he heard door shut behind, failing to realize that the girl quickly left before he could even reply to her. My, my, I guess is only natural for the school hero to become popular with the girls. Don't let it get to your head, he knew that annoying voice anywhere, Shinoa. She walked down the stairs as she continued egging on the blonde, in no time we will have trail of broken hearts to mend. Oh shut up, you don't know me, T.T. Ibeo, Naruto said as he put the letter in his pocket, like I said before I don't have time for a love confession, T.T. Ibeo. Shinoa dramatically clutched her heart as she mockingly spoke, Oh Naruto, how could you be so heartless? I poured everything I wrote into that letter. Does your ice-cold heart truly not feel my love? Stop bastardizing my image, I like girls as much as the next guy but sadly there are other things I have to do before I can go out and date, T.T. Ibeo. Oh my, you're quite the honest virgin I see, Shinoa once again mocked as she walked ecstatically to the fence. What the hell is wrong with that? These days virginity might as well be considered a mortal sin, that's why the demon army encourages everyone to form new relationships. It's important for people to hook up. I can't believe it, T.T. Ibeo. Naruto said as he fought his blush. Well it's true, the world has already come to an end once, anyone who wasn't killed by the virus ended up in the Valley of Wandering Monsters. Shinoa hopped on top of the platform bench as she gazed at the ruined city and the large walls that guarded them from the threats, we're lucky that even a tenth of us survived. Past those walls there's endless ruins and wastelands crawling all manner of beasts. This world of ours is no longer safe for humanity. That's where the Imperial Demon Army comes in. We'll gather the remnants of mankind and free our way out on top of the food chain once again, yeah, yeah, heard the speech from Gurren already, Naruto rudely cut in, but Shinoa was not by chance discouraged as she twirled happily and finished where the blonde left off. Wow not only is she annoying she's also quite the pervert, T.T. Ibeo, Naruto quickly judged despite being just as equally perverted as Shinoa, hypocrite, can I ask you something? Shinoa turned as she blinked at him. Is there a reason why I'm still stuck in this dump? I already passed Gurren's test and been assigned to the vampire extermination unit. Naruto spoke as he continued with his next question, so why am I wasting time playing schoolboy? I feel so generic just being here, T.T. Ibeo. Sorry, clearly Shinoa wasn't, that's a question only for the lieutenant colonel not me. Geez have you met the guy? That lazy bastard barely lounges in his office. He even goes great lengths to avoid me, how the hell am I supposed to ask him? I don't know why you're yelling at me, do I look like his keeper? Naruto brows scrunched at the reply, until Shinoa spoke again. Besides, you don't need to wait to start your new training as a matter of fact it has already begun. Our special methods make the most difficult wishes obtainable, soon you will fulfill your desires. And what makes you think you know about my desires, T.T. Ibeo? Naruto said as he saw Shinoa pull out what looked to be a customized design black pen length rod. I know you want power, like this, she twirled the rod and immediately ignited in a dark vapory cloud of ashes that took form of an amorphous creature with a wide mouth, jagged fangs that contained an eye like glowing orb, and a pair of jagged horns that curved back behind its head. Holy shit, what the hell is that thing? Naruto said as he stared at the creature in pure awe. This is the demon I formed a contract with, Shikama Doji. As she said that, the demon opened wide as a curved blade soon materialized from its maw. Shinoa pulled and the demon extinguished from sight leaving the appearance of a massive black scythe, she spun it gracefully and swiftly danced with the flames ignited on the curved blade show off, Naruto thought. Try not to embarrass yourself around him. So that's a cursed gear, so you really do have one, Naruto spoke as he marveled at the weapon. Why wouldn't I have one? I'm a member of the extermination unit too after all. It looks amazing, if I had one I could kill any fang I wanted, Naruto said as he looked at the weapon in greed. Not on your own you couldn't, if you want to beat vampires you have to work in teams, Shinoa frowned at Naruto's lone wolf attitude. So that's why Gurren so hard ass on me on making friends, Naruto spoke crudely, I can do that, I'm a team player, T.T. Ibeo. Say that to your reports, Shinoa quickly shot down and continued firing verbally, insubordination, charging in without a plan and my favorite is tendency to do dramatic flares in mid-battles. Naruto expression flustered in embarrassment. Okay, 
Okay, I get it I am an attention whore, T.T. Ebao. Indeed you are, Shinoa gave a Cheshire grin. Ah, whatever, Naruto said as his face returned to normal and a smirk plastered his face, if that's a cursed gear then how about I test its power in a spar, you down with that Shinoa. I would love to embarrass you in a little, spar, but there's one problem, you have no weapon to defend yourself against me. Naruto smirked as the illusion of his right arm wore of, showing his mechanized prosthetic. The blonde clicked the command key on his forearm. The latch on his forearm opened and from the inside Naruto pulled out a small knight sword. The sword had a rectangular, hollow, pommel with a fairly long bandaged grip, with a unique trident-like crossguard that connected to the rainguard. Naruto swung the sword in mid-motion and quickly extended into full-fledged sword. Oh wow do you also keep your drinks in there, Shinoa teased lightly. My arm is not a refrigerator it's an awesome mechanized weapon, T.T. Ibeo, Naruto said defensively. Just shut up and fight, Shinoa taunted. No fair, I wanted say that, T.T. Ibeo. Naruto thought childishly as he spearheaded his way through the scythe-wielding girl's direction. Shinoa easily bunted the force of the blade making Naruto's ruthless charge take a seat back, as it was now Shinoa that took lead in the battle. Naruto was shocked by the girl's surprising strength, he put everything he had on that swing. Guess I'll have to push myself a bit more harder if really want to beat her, concentration is the key, Naruto thought as he went forward. She twirled her scythe and at mid-motion blocked her opponent's attack with the chine of the scythe and swiftly danced in harmony with her cursed Jing Naruto's consecutive two hit slashes. Okay, she's very nimble with her attacks and has good timing with her movements, Naruto thought in mid-battle as he charged forward one more time with a swipe making Shinoa to easily parry the blade. So my best option is to seal off her range by getting close. Shinoa twirled again adding the motion to her scythe in hopes to crush Naruto's offensive line of attack, for it was about time she showed the difference between him and her. And also to see what childish face he will make when he loses, it made Shinoa want to crave for her victory even more. Naruto shifted his grip to only one hand and proceeded to fully use the third law of Newton at his advantage. For every action there's an equal opposite reaction. Two equal forces clashed and halted each other's tracks. Shinoa's only reaction was a slight widening of her eyes but did not daze in shock long enough as she saw Naruto slide under the scythe and into her space, she knew what he was doing and for that she wasn't going to make it easy for him. Her scythe was long for a reason and used the snath to defend herself, forcing Naruto to push the attack off him giving Shinoa the speed to motion herself to attack. Naruto immediately ducked as the scythe passed in mid-motion, his prosthetic cracked the floor as all his fingers were spread. Naruto smirked as he dropped his sword and launched like a bullet. Just as Shinoa was about to bring her scythe down to crush the floor in hopes of scaring Naruto into distance she was immediately halted before she could perform said such act. The sound of the scythe clattering on the floor was music to Naruto's ears, and Shinoa's struggling face was a bonus too, as the small girl did her best to support Naruto's unwelcomed weight. The octopus hold a famous professional wrestling hold that was invented by Killer B during his days in the wrestling circuit and was now used as punishment towards Shinoa. Naruto. Get off me. You're too heavy, Shinoa said as her face flushed in embarrassment as she easily allowed herself to get easily subdued, especially in an angle like this. Thank goodness no one was here watching this humiliating display. Naruto laughed as he unlocked the hold setting Shinoa free, allowing the girl to massage her aching muscles. Here let me do it, Naruto politely said as he rubbed her shoulders which Shinoa allowed. I should report this to Gurren, she hissed dangerously. Naruto smiled slyly and returned. Maybe you should but can you live through the embarrassment of a fresh baked private beating a ranking officer such as yourself especially in the way he subdued you. The blonde felt proud of his reply but his moment of glory was immediately washed away as Shinoa covered her face and began sobbing, Naruto's face paled in fear. HH hey, 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 what are you crying for? Naruto said as his voice went frantic, I'll do anything you want, I promise, just don't cry okay. Shinoa's sobs immediately stopped and let her hands fall as she stared at Naruto in a devilish smile, anything. This bitch, Naruto's mind screamed as he couldn't believe he let himself get easily duped, I take everything I said back, tt ebeo. Ah, 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 boys like you shouldn't go against their promises. Shinoa wagged her finger teasingly, it shows bad character, 
But don't worry I won't ask anything right now but sometime or day maybe a year I'll come and pick up that deal. Just remember who holds your leash. I'm no one's dog. T.T. Ibeo. Naruto heatedly pointed at Shinoa causing the girl's smile to only grow wider. Do I need to teach you discipline? Shinoa asked eagerly. Naruto's face fumed as he charged, picking up his sword and engaged in round two. Shinoa immediately took distance and slashed the air with her cursed gear and immediately appeared the demonic entity and slammed the blonde square in the chest. The fence rattled as Naruto's body slammed through it. He looked at Shinoa with a smile. Wow, that was pretty cool, Naruto said as he sobbed his sore chest and walked towards Shinoa's direction. Fighting vampires with one of those cursed gears should be a piece of cake. It's war, when we are up on the battlefield we'll be up against their soldiers, there won't be any unarmed vampires and handicaps. They all have weapons too you know. Shinoa informed to the disillusioned blonde. Geez, now that just sucks, Naruto voiced out his complaint. They suck, why do you think Lieutenant Colonel Gurin has been beating teamwork in that big skull of yours? Shinoa lectured to the blonde once again as she let her cursed gear disappear from sight, we cannot win this without each other. And like I said before I can be a team PLA, Ruto-kun, help me out here, er. Naruto finished as Yoichi barged in from the door of the rooftop and quickly hid behind his back like he was some impenetrable barrier of defense. Come on quit running, yelled a familiar voice that Naruto knew well. You got to be kidding me do these guys need another reminder of what happened the last time they picked on you, Naruto said displeasingly as he looked to see the familiar faces of Satoshi, Teruomi and for some reason Yuji was absent, probably must have known better. We don't want trouble, Satoshi clarified as he regained his breath, please, just hear us out. Sorry about before, we were great a jerks. Would you please forgive us and make us your disciples? Teruomi asked making Naruto wonder if he was serious or not. Now wait a second I can have any disciples. No way, Yoichi spoke humbly as he peeked his head out behind Naruto's shoulder, besides I don't deserve that kind of honor. Hey it's you, Naruto, Satoshi said joyfully as he noticed the blonde, thanks for saving me yesterday. My name is Yamanaka Satoshi, you saved me from that vampire bitch, wait of stick it to her boss man. Boss man? Shinoa sighed loudly as she folded her arms, looks like you're becoming popular with the male students too, I'm starting to feel left out. Be quiet, Naruto said as he looked back to Satoshi, so what's with the change of attitude, yesterday you were using Yoichi as your lapdog, you have no right asking him for favors. Yeah, I can't argue with you there, Satoshi told regretfully, surprising Naruto by his change of heart, we messed up okay, but we could really use his help right now. Jeez. What do you guys want if you're really that desperate and wanting help, Naruto said, wondering if he should really help the people who bullied Yuichi. My, what a saint, he's willing to help those who are below his status, Shinoa mocked Naruto's lending hand. Shut up Shinoa, we'll talk later, Naruto stared irritantly at her back. Oh my. You speak as we are married, that's what Shinoa wanted to say and see what kind of reaction or reply the blonde would give but decided to respect his wish and stay silent, for now that is. Thank you. We know we got no right asking you especially since we're such jerks but still. Still what? Get on with it already. Satoshi paused as he took glance at Shinoa before he gave himself the courage to speak, it's Yuji, the guy who was with us. He went inside the forbidden chamber and he never came back out. The forbidden chamber? That's right and since I've heard Yoichi is joining the extermination unit I thought. Aha, uh -huh, of course you did. Shinoa intervened in the conversation as she had everyone's attention, I should have guessed the words, class 1 restricted area, might as well be a welcoming mat for you morons. And no, it's just we. Satoshi couldn't find his words as he stared his friend for help. There is no excuse, Shinoa said sharply not wanting to hear their pathetic cover up, to be honest I don't care why you did it. I care about the punishment and as far as the army is concerned, your friend's punishment has already been decided. What? Satoshi cried out. No way, are we talking hard time? I'm sure he's already in custody. Oh no, how long will he be in there? Until the army decides to execute him, Shinoa stated coldly making Naruto frowned at just you forget about him. Yuji's friend could only stare helplessly and distraught at his tragic demise. I'll help get your friend out. 
Naruto said as he dragged Shinoa with him not bothering to hear Satoshi and Teruomi's cries of thanks. Underscore, Shinoa, what exactly is the forbidden chamber? Naruto asked as he ignored the sting of a small red printed feminine hand on his cheek, is it some sort of secret lab? Giggle, no nothing like that, it's just one of the school's seven wonders, like the piano that plays concert all by itself or moving anatomical dolls, though I can't remember if the chamber is third or fourth on the list. It doesn't matter which wonder it is right now, if it's a restricted area the military has got to control, Naruto said as he walked the small stairs of the abandoned halls. So Yuji somehow opened the chamber and now he's trapped inside of it? Yuichi asked if he was getting the gist of things. More than likely, Shinoa replied to her timid friend, but that's not the issue, the room is actually a training facility for the extermination unit. If a non-trained civilian like Yuji gets in there's a high chance that he will be possessed by the demon. Wait a minute, did you just say demon? Naruto asked for clarification as Shinoa turned to him. Remember what I told you? Naruto only blinked in response, you don't need to worry about training because it's already started. It's time for us to move to the next step, now if you'll follow me. Shinoa led the way as Naruto and Yoichi followed close by. The scythe wielder added interesting trivia about the building and school as they went down the halls and stairs to the forbidden the chamber. Only one fact made Naruto question about the school. An underground shrine? Why put a shrine in a school and underground of all places? Well it isn't really a shrine, we just like call it that, Shinoa answered Naruto's question as she opened the door, an eerie howl echoed through the empty halls and stairs, the gust the escaped wavering their clothes and locks of hair. Two were not afraid and one was definitely afraid. Shinoa entered first and then followed by Yoichi, as they were about to turn to the second set of stairs Yoichi noticed that Naruto wasn't following them. Ruto-kun aren't you going to catch up? Yoichi asked in innocence as he failed to see Naruto's hesitance in entering except Shinoa. Oh my, it seems Mr. Hero Complex is actually afraid, the embarrassed expression he made, made this tease worth it as Naruto quickly bolted to the set of stairs and confronted Shinoa face to face. I ain't afraid of no ghost, tt ibeo, Naruto replied hotly. Shinoa teasing smile grew wider as she heard his reply, I didn't say anything about ghost. Naruto's face flushed in embarrassment as he let one of his fears slip out from his tongue, Shinoa boldly grabbed his hand catching Naruto by surprise forcing to fight his rising blush even more. Don't worry Naruto-kun. Just stay by my side and I'll protect you from the evil spirits that haunts this school. Be my heroine and let me be your knight in shining armor, the petite girl declared dramatically as Naruto quickly took his hand back and yelled. No way in hell. Yes way never in a million years. My, it seems my heroine is actually a Tsunere. What did you just call me? Naruto yelled at the teasing Hiragi as Yoichi finally got the nerve to get in between them. Guys please don't fight, Yoichi said as he tried to calm the situation between his friends, Shinoa there's nothing wrong in being afraid of ghost, everyone has something to be afraid of even if it's a childish one. Hey! Naruto cried. Come on, remember what we're here for to save Yuji san Naruto and Shinoa were a bit surprised over Yuichi's way of breaking the fight over them. I guess you're right Yuichi, but just in case let's hold Naruto's hands so that we may give him courage to face his fears. Shinoa said as she hid her ulterior motive to embarrass the blonde once again. Yuichi brightened as he replied, that's a wonderful idea Shinoa. Wait, what? Naruto's hands were immediately held by Shinoa and Yoichi respectively as they dragged him down the stairs, much to his charging. As they passed several staircases, Shinoa began to speak, Naruto didn't know why, either to inform them or she just liked hearing herself talk either way he wasn't complaining over the shared information she was passing on to them. Back before the virus broke out, a massive underground space was installed by the Shibuya part of Tokyo. Its original purpose was to prevent the river from flooding to the excess rainfall but now it's been converted to the vampire extermination unit's training ground then again the whole school has. Basically every student here is part of the secret military experiment. Experiment? Naruto frowned at that, just hearing that word made him feel very uncomfortable and quite enraged for some strange reason. Shinoa stopped by mid-stairs and turned to him as she continued onwards to her explanation. The demon is the key. Anyone who is unaffected by its evil energy is filtered in by the unit, Yoichi let out an audible gulp as tightened his hold on Naruto's hand which caused the blonde to squeeze Shinoa's hand, 
giving her the message to knock it off but the cursed gear user wasn't one for sugarcoating her words. Every one of us is a lab rat, it may be hard to hear but what did you expect in this messed up world we live in? After that Naruto started holding Shinoa's hand a little tighter than his usual firm grip. Walking down all the stairs was a pain but it was worth it as they made it to the front gates of some rusty old metal doors that was covered in by several talisman that must have been there for years as the musky and yellow drying was ever present. It gave a spooky feeling towards it but Naruto has gone all this way to save Yuji, so he couldn't afford to cower away now off all times. There are two types of people that can go beyond this point, those summoned by the extermination unit and those chosen by the demon. Shinoa spoke as she finally let go of Naruto's hand causing the blonde to do the same with Yoichi. So Yuji is in there? Yoichi asked hesitantly as he faced Shinoa. If he is, we didn't summon him, Shinoa replied to her timid friend, the demon may have already consumed his heart. Yoichi gasped at that and asked, what if it decides to grab us and eat our hearts? You become a ravenous man eating monster far worse than any vampires we faced. Shinoa replied honestly as Yoichi was immediately stricken fear of hearing such a fate. It's not pretty that's why you need to be thoroughly trained first, especially your strength of heart. Shinoa said as she explained further, you need to understand the cost in wielding the cursed gear that's why I brought you here to see this, getting in there won't be just some walk in the park and besides don't worry about Yuji he will be saved. That's a nice thing to say Shinoa, but we can't just wait for the demon moon company to save the day, we have to take initiative after all I doubt waiting is a demon's strong point. Naruto said smoothly as he jostled the door open and treaded inside with no fear. Are you crazy? Shinoa questioned his sanity. Hey, I'm perfectly normal I just have a few screws loose that's all, Naruto said assuring Shinoa that he was perfectly sane though his last statement didn't seem to help. As he walked forward to the balcony of the stairs Naruto was welcomed to the visage of several swords, spears, axes and etc of all kinds of origin that were either embedded or plainly laid on the floor and on the middle was a chalked painted sigil like pentagram that was lighted on four corners by floor stage lights. In the middle of the pentagram waited Yuji, having a large dark shaped axe with a green lining and a wooden handle with a black pointed pommel at the end of the staff. Please for the love of god don't do anything, understood. Just watch from a distance, I already repeated this on will come and save him soon enough. Shinoa said in her best reasoning voice. Nope, sorry but my mission is to save Yuji, that's all Naruto said as he jumped towards the fray running over two set of rails of stairs. Wait. Uh. Shinoa was not pleased and ordered Yoichi. Yoichi, we're going to need backup go and find the Moon Demon Company, their barracks are in the back of this facility. Right. Yoichi said as he followed order. Yuji, do yourself a favor and drop the weapon before you get hurt. Naruto ordered as he pulled his hidden sword, necessary if battle ensued. Turns out Naruto was correct as Yuji immediately lunged his axe upon him. The blonde easily rolled away from harm and gave a fierce strike causing Yuji to defend up front with the belly handle. Like a raging bull Yuji pressed Naruto back making the blonde to stalemate the struggle with his mechanized arm. The possessed teenager was not pleased as he growled viciously but was immediately shut as Naruto reared back his head and slammed his forehead face first to Yuji's. Shinoa came late as she saw the blonde's brazen head but, even though she knew Naruto about only two days she just knew it was so like him to pull a move like that. Blood spurted from Yuji's swollen nose as he easily dropped the axe that was caught by the blonde. Shinoa's eyes widened in fear as she yelled at him cursing herself and him for not letting her explain the further mechanics of the curse gears. Naruto dropped the weapon now, but why Shinoa, Naruto whined as he turned to her before realizing his location changed and for some reason felt quite short. What's up? It was a voice he wouldn't have thought of hearing in a million years except in his dreams but he turned and was greeted by the sight of his second deceased family. They all happily sat at the olden table where they all once lived, as if the night with Farid never happened at all. Is there something wrong? Michaela questioned as he noticed Naruto's expression, Wow you look pale. Stop spacing out, you need eat before the food gets cold. Yeah, hurry up, don't let all my hard work go to waste, Ruto, spoke Akane as she gestured him towards his seat. I'm hungry bro, come on, Kutra said anxiously, it's really tasty, Fumi exclaimed excitedly. Every part of his body screamed for him to go there and take a seat just enjoying the time and being with them but he knew deep down inside it was fake. 
This is a dream, all of you are dead, Naruto's heart wrenched when he said that. Yeah, you watched Farid murder us, the fake Michaela said with a smile. Yep, we're D.E.A.D., Tai Chi said cheerfully. How can you not remember? Akko questioned. Don't forget our deaths, ya no, Chihiro chastised. Totally how can you forget the part where that mean vampire noble ripped our bodies limb from limb, Akane said in a refreshing smile, the only one who ran away from him was you. Naruto tried to rebuke, but she was right. At that moment where Naruto was close to death, he ran. To live and not die, a decision that haunted till this day. You abandon us, it's been four years and you haven't avenged our deaths, Michaela said from behind as he put his arms around him, it's not too late to change that, you can still get revenge for us and set things right. If you like I can lend you my power, accept my gift with all your heart and every vampire will remember your presence and the fear you strike at their hearts. Thank you, the demon was startled by the sudden gratitude, for making me remember at why am I here today in this time. I want power, power to save those that I love and cherish, I don't want to lose anyone anymore, I hate being alone. It might just be me being selfish, but not having my friends here is the most painful thing for me, period. What? The demon screeched as his human form was torn apart, revealing his true form. How are you doing this? Stop it. The house collapsed and space was whirling in destruction as the holy flames around Naruto burned brightly and clenched his mechanized fist as light radiated from it. The power I seek doesn't come from this hate I'm filled, I'm going to seek my true power and I sure as hell don't need it from you, T.T. Ibeo. Naruto charged, burying his fist at the shade demon's face, shattering reality in its wake. It was dark and damp as Naruto noticed that he was in a sewer but could see light at the end of the tunnel, the blonde was hesitant to walk but he braced himself for what might appear at the end. It only took one step for everything to go wrong as hearing a noise getting louder and louder by the second. Naruto turned and was immediately splashed and dragged by the currents of the water all the way to the end. Naruto flayed his arms in vain as the currents raged against him and then a large fire ignited, despite being underwater. The blonde could only take a peek, seeing a large thing with a visor as its face. He wondered what it was as he was immediately pushed to flame. Naruto opened his eyes and saw Shinoa and Yoichi at his side. Okay, why am I lying on the floor? Instead of answering his question Shinoa instead voiced her surprise, I can't believe it, you managed to come back all on your own. Come from where exactly? Naruto asked confusedly as his memories were a bit jarred. Shinoa and Yoichi looked at each other before Shinoa answered, the demon, it tricked you. It had you trapped in some intense hallucination but even without a contract spell you broke free from the power of your mind, that's quite the accomplishment. Well I always knew I was awesome. Naruto joked dryly as he looked at the axe, so does this axe belong to me now? No, it's a little more involved than that, Shinoa explained as she went further in detail, there are procedures to follow when you form a new contract, Gurren will decide which cursed gear will suit you best, you're just going to have to be patient. Even after hearing all that Naruto couldn't fight his sly smile that spread on his face, but I totally kicked that demon's ass, T.T. Ibeo. Shinoa couldn't face him as she tilted eyes away in shame, ah, uh, technically. And this is the second time I've beaten the Demon Moon Company to the rescue, ya yeah, no. Well, yeah I guess you have a point, Shinoa admitted as she got up and walked, on top of that you saved another classmate, you won't have to wait much longer. Starting tomorrow you will begin your training with the rest of the Vampire Extermination Unit. That's what I like to hear, T.T. Ibeo, Naruto exclaimed excitedly. Not that I have the authority to make that decisions, Shinoa thought worryingly, wondering at what possessed her to say such things, Gurren won't be happy when he finds out. As Naruto got up and moved out, the V-zone of the creature re-emerged from his mind causing him to halt, what is that thing? Naruto aren't you coming? Yoichi asked in worry which was shared by Shinoa. Oh sorry, I just remembered something I had to do in my home, the blonde excused as he sprinted to catch up to his friends. Underscore, next day. Naruto let out Yan escape as he exited out of the rooftop of the school and was at the halls, ready to leave and attend to his first class in the Moon Demon Company barracks. Everything was going nice and smooth until someone rudely and intentionally bumped into him. Watch where you're going you damn punk. Naruto got a clear look at the person who spoke to him rudely. His most noticeable and eye-catching trait was obviously his pink hair that was kept short and messy, 
He had reddish brown eyes and wore black thick framed glasses along with two piercings on his left ear. It was clear as day he was just some wannabe punk that was obviously looking for trouble. Naruto grumbled internally as he made himself to quickly apologize, sorry about that, I just woke up from a nap. Take a nap at home retard, the pink haired punk shot rudely. Hey, I said I was sorry, Naruto protested, you starting a fight. Wah, Naruto never got too finished as he was immediately decked in the face by the offender to the fence and immediately regained his balance as he growled at the punk and leapt forward, commencing the brawl as all the students in the immediate area began surrounding in a circle to see the fight while some chanted. Whoa, Ruto-kun what happened to your face? Yoichi spoke as he saw Naruto sporting some minor bruises. I got in a fight with a punk ass wannabe, Naruto answered loosely as they started to walk together towards the barracks. Are you hurt? Yoichi said in concern. I think that question should be asked to the guy who's on the floor with a bloody nose, Naruto smirked proudly at his victory. Oh my, I hope he isn't too hurt, Yoichi laughed awkwardly. Two of you are late, Shinoa said with her smirk ever present in her face as she waited for them behind the pillar. Well you see me and Yoichi spotted a black cat on the road and we decide to take long way, Naruto said wittedly, am I right Yoichi? Yoichi caught off guard, stuttered as he lied terribly, I am afraid so, please forgive us Shinoa. My, what a poor excuse, I expected better from you Naruto, Shinoa smirked. Can it? We're here now that's all that matters, Naruto spoke irritably as he remembered that idiot punk. Shinoa never lost her smirk at the blonde's rude remark and decided to bring up the fight he had with Kimizuki Shiho. Looks like someone pummeled your face. Is another suspension in order? Hey, that's rich coming from the girl who didn't even bother reporting the fight that happened two days ago. Naruto grinned victoriously. You'll get in a lot of trouble for not doing your job properly, Shinoa. My, resorting to blackmail who knew you could resort to such low means, Shinoa mocked in a surprised tone. I truly misjudged your character, I'm so disappointed you. Shut up. Naruto yelled childishly and waved his hand in the air as he spoke. Let's just go to class already. Like you said we're going to be late. Shinoa rolled her eyes as she smiled softly. Well if you say so and yeah I admit we do have a lot bigger things in our plate today. Yoichi brightened as he joined the conversation. Yeah, I'm so psyched after all this waiting we finally get to start training to become members of Moon Demon Company. Come on, we can finish the conversation later, Naruto voiced as he went forward. Hold on cowboy, you don't know where your class is, Shinoa said as she walked ahead, just follow your master Shinoa for guidance. Naruto mumbled incoherent words as he followed the petite girl to his class. Excuse me everyone, Shinoa said politely as she brought in Naruto and Yoichi inside the classroom, immediately shifting their attention to Lieutenant Colonel Gurin who was dozing off without a care. I brought these two slowpokes with me lieutenant colonel. Uh. Naruto cut of Shinoa by putting his hand in front her. Shinoa blinked as she watched the blonde walk towards Gurin. She wondered what he was going to do. He cocked his fist back and everyone looked in horror as Naruto punched the lieutenant colonel square in the jaw. Gurin fell from his seat as he immediately felt his stinging cheek. Rise and shine sleeping beauty. Naruto stared dryly as he watched Gurin pick himself up. Hurry up and introduce us already. No one in here has time for your self beauty sleep, T.T. Ibeo. You have a lot of balls punching a superior officer Naruto, Gurin growled as his cheek began to color slightly. And you sure have a mighty stick up your ass if you actually believe that you were going to get away with sleeping on duty, Naruto criticized, you're supposed to embody the respect and duty of that uniform, yet you failed to show it. Shut up brat, you know nothing how this world works, Gurin said in a lecturing tone. Maybe I don't but I'm having a good time learning the ropes. Naruto smirked as he went back to Yoichi and Shinoa's side, so that said, are you going to introduce us, T.T. Ibeo? Gurin sighed as he faced the classroom, time to get started, the reason I'm making such a rare appearance is because we have a couple of transfer students I want to introduce you to. All students faced at Yoichi and Naruto, and everyone focused on Naruto. Punching the esteemed lieutenant colonel sure leaves a big impression. You know just for your information, the supervising teacher should probably be coming to class every day, Shinoa said in a matter-of-fact tone. Gurin didn't like the reminder, why don't you mind your own business? Hey, don't talk to her like that, Naruto said as he defended Shinoa, she wouldn't be telling you all this if you haven't been doing your job properly.
quit being such an asshole and start doing your job more properly. Then why don't you take a hint? Gurren raised his voice at the blonde, it's my business not yours, but out. Your business decision affects all of us you know, Naruto said in absolute truth. Gurren clicked his tongue and conceded as he introduced them to the class, so where was I? Oh right as I was saying these are the transfers, Hayakuya Naruto and Saotome Yuichi. Though it might be easier to remember them as the knucklehead and the wuss. Ah, that's sweet of you to say Gurren, Naruto said with sarcasm dripping from his voice. You're welcome, Gurren replied without a missing a beat, now go ahead and introduce yourselves. After Gurren finished Naruto jumped in and introduced himself to the class, Hayakuya Naruto is the name. I like instant ramen in a cup as well as manga and pop culture entertainment. I hate the three minutes you have to wait for the ramen to cook and the vampires who forced us to live like this. So that's why I made it my goal to be the greatest nightmare the vampires have ever faced, showing them that humans are not only strong but scary as well. So let's get strong and beat the fangs together. Gurren wasn't sure what surprised him more, the part where he optimistically just introduced himself to the class or the part where some of the students clapped or even welcomed him for the matter, despite few hesitating. Just a stupid introduction and everyone is already warming up to him, Gurren thought disbelievingly at the sight before he clasped his hand to get everyone's attention, all right good introduction Naruto, you can take a seat in the back of the row. Sweet, Naruto said as he walked in the back of the classroom as absently listened to Yoichi's polite introduction that some of the girls to coo at him, thinking he was sweet guy. Naruto walked towards the desk he was supposed to be seating only to find it occupied by another student who had his feet on top of the desk and a booklet covering his face no doubt sleeping in class. Then Blonde let out a sigh as he knocked the desk gently, hey don't mean to be an ass about this but Gurren assigned me to this chair, would you mind moving for me, if that's cool with you? If not I'll ask Gurren for another spot, tt ibeo. Just let me sleep, Kimizuki replied as he lifted the booklet of his face to show how pissed he was at having his nap interrupted but evolved into rage as he came across a familiar Blonde, you. Holy crap, we meet again Salmon, Naruto chortled as Kimizuki stood tall. Kimizuki growled at the nickname and questioned, what the hell are you doing here you idiot blonde? What do you think it looks like Salmon? I'm a transfer student moron, tt ibeo, Naruto replied haughtily. Who the hell are you calling Salmon? Kimizuki yelled as Gurren watched the event unfold as confused as the rest of the students of the classroom. What's the story between those two? Kimizuki was starting to seem friendlier and less volatile but seeing Naruto just completely set him off. Gurren then looked at Shinoa critically as he asked, I thought you were working on them? Shinoa smiling as always replied, fairly diligently. And the results? This is a mark of improvement, Shinoa replied as she saw Kimizuki fight with more effort in his previous bout with Naruto. You were supposed to keep a close watch on them. Kimizuki landed blow for blow against the blonde, forcing him only to defend. But I did woe was now the offensive as Kimizuki dazed over the blonde's hook, this morning Kimizuki attacked Hayakuya to test his ability and maintain his alpha dominance over the students. And, did you step in to break up the fight? Actually I stayed in hiding and watched the show. Many had their money on Kimizuki thankfully I put my bet on the black horse, which raced all the way to victory. I'm beginning to think you're not very good at your job, Gurren commented critically. Naruto dodged Kimizuki's sloppy right as he went behind and wrapped his arms around his waist, and lifted him over his head, sending him crashing on the nearby desk. Kimizuki passed out in pain as the blonde once again won the fight, ha, huh? don't let your guard down, tt ibeo. Ah, Ruto-kun is he okay? Yoichi said worriedly, that German suplex looked like it hurt a lot. Don't worry about it Yoichi, after all he started it, Naruto casually dismissed as he yawned. Come on Gurren, let's get this class started. Underscore, it was a fine day in Gurren's office as he listened to the sweet jazz playing on phonograph where he was sitting on his desk diligently reviewing the early reports that came in. Just a few more reads and he would be done, allowing him to get a jump start on more of his pressing work. Nothing could his ruin this for him. Lieutenant Colonel Ichinos, I don't mean to intrude but do you have time to talk? Kimizuki walked towards Gurren's desk as he closed the door behind him. Yeah sure ask all the question you like, is not like I had anything important to do, sometimes Gurren hated showing restraint but doing it over the years of his life he managed to cope with the problem as he gave a rather less rude reply, no one don't come in here without permission. 
I just have a question about the Cursed Gear aptitude test, a week from now. On that day I'll be given the chance to try out the top ranked Black Demon series right? Kimizuki asked as he ignored Gurin's answer. You're starting to wear out your welcome, Gurin said with bite. Kimizuki once again ignored Gurin's reply. My grades are better than anyone else's, I'm the strongest student in class. Gurin turned his chair as he placed the papers in his desk and asked, Why is it so important for you to have that kind of power? Kimizuki replied automatically, The army does background checks on all of us, I'm sure you read all the files on each potential recruit. Yeah, I know all about your history. You got a sister who's infected with the apocalypse virus and now you're looking for a cure. Gurin summarized surprising Kimizuki that he remembered, I understand your intentions, and there are certain perks in being a member of Demon Moon Company, things like unlimited medical treatments that are unavailable to the rest of the public. Unfortunately you still got off a lot of training to go through and in your current state you couldn't even touch the cursed gear. It would feed of your desire for a cure and eventually consume you. Kimizuki let out a small dry chuckle as he gave a bitter smile, I bet you're going to let Hayakuya try out any weapon he wants aren't cha. That all remains to be seen, although he showed no talent in the beginning he came a long way with just his sheer indomitable will and heck it allowed him to break hold from demon. Kimizuki's eyes widen in surprise at that as Gurren continued, despite his ignorant attitude he's a lot more keen than he lets on and cares a great deal for his comrades, willing to put his neck in risk just for them. That's bullshit I'm way stronger than he'll ever be, Kimizuki replied heatedly. Well listen to this quote then, those who break the rules are regarded as trash. But, those who abandon their comrades are even worse than trash. You know who said those lines Kimizuki? It was the blonde that had you beat twice. Strength isn't everything and you need to learn that, make some friends, form a support system, and stop taking everything on yourself otherwise. Gurren stood up from his chair as he unsheathed his curse gear from his scabbard, letting its dark powers spread around the room. When you find yourself face to face with a demon, you'll have no chance in controlling it. The needle scratched the record as the evil miasma from Mihiru no Yo changed the lighting of the office into an eerie dark purple as the dark energy wormed its way to the ceilings. Demon feeds on desperation and rage, if you attempted a contract now you would be swallowed whole and never find yourself a way out. Gurren finished as Kimizuki brave face shattered in fear. Underscore, the next class started as the beautiful second lieutenant Hanayori Sayuri took charge. Naruto thought she was cute, wheat colored hair that was held on the front right side of her hair out with a braid in a unique style. She wore the standard Jita uniform with a long black skirt that reached her thighs, dark gray pantyhose and ankle high black boots. Shame about the age difference. Not that it would stop Naruto but it would stop his senior from committing the relationship. Listen up students, in preparation for the next week curse gear aptitude test, I will be assessing all of your abilities. If you can't show me that you're already here then you'll have to keep training and take the test in a later date so do your best okay. Second Lieutenant Hanayori informed to the students. That's a lot of pressure, Yuichi said, already feeling the weight of the test despite not being told the rules. Come on Yuichi. Put some spine, Naruto said as he cheerfully slapped Yuichi's back, causing him to stumble a bit. After all we're the newbies and we got to show them how cool and strong we are to the class, T.T. Ibeo. Right, Yuichi said as some of Naruto's fire passed on to him. My, aren't you too excited for the day, Shinoa said in her usual cat smile. Kimizuki saw the scene at distance as second lieutenant continued on with instructions. Today I will be evaluating your base on how well you work with others, go ahead, everyone choose a partner to work with. Naruto was caught fairly surprised about the test as he thought this was going to be an individual exam, the blonde turned to his already chosen partner, Yoichi. Who was not in his line sight, Naruto turned to see that he was snagged away from Shinoa. We're going to be the best team in the whole class, don't you agree, Shinoa said in an upbeat tone as she wrapped her arms around Yoichi. You uh. Yeah, Yoichi replied hesitantly. Hey wait you two. What about me? Naruto asked frantically as Shinoa turned with a troll smile. Looks like you're going to have find someone else to partner up with, Shinoa then dragged Yoichi away, good luck. Naruto turned to see around watching almost everyone partnering up except him, he gave his last turn and saw Kimizuki staring right at him which forced him to make a regrettable decision, out of all the fucking people. Look we got off on the wrong. So let's work together to pass this with flying colors, T.T. Ibeo. 
Naruto spoke diplomatically as possible. TCH, I should be complaining right now, Kimizuki commented. Naruto growled at his answer, just shut up and don't get in my way, TT Ibeo. Stand by and watch. I'll take the lead and put an end to this right away. The blonde snorted at that claim, ha, huh, I believe that, after all you're good at losing badly, TT Ibeo. Kimizuki scowled as he was face to face with the blonde, you wanna go again Nimrod. Three times a charm isn't going to work on you salmon, Naruto baited as he and Kimizuki were about to deck each other until a flying pair of handcuffs linked together. They turned to see that the perpetrator was the second lieutenant. As the second lieutenant Hanayori Sayuri, handcuffed the delinquents together, Naruto and Kimizuki stood at each other's side but faced away from one another, denying their existence for the time being that is. Your attention please, now that everyone has chosen a partner, it is time to put your game faces on, let's get this party started, the second Lie. The doors open and revealed several battle dolls, which creeped out Naruto as well as the rest of the students. Their anatomy was out proportion with their long thick limbs as well as bulky thighs, which made Naruto wonder on how they could walk so well. Do you know what the hell these creepy things are? Naruto asked to Kimizuki as one of the dolls faced him down. These are the army's cursed puppets, Kimizuki informed to his ignorant partner. Naruto saw Shinoa and Yoichi scrammed out the way as the cursed puppet slammed his long arm the ground, he smirked as he spoke, man why am I not surprised that they're slow, tt Ibeo. The faster we trash these things the higher our scores will go up, Kimizuki said as he went and by his own thoughts presumably taken lead until he felt chains jingled as he was yanked back by an opposite force which was Naruto, who went the other way. Kimizuki glared at the blonde as he yelled, what's your problem? Quit messing around we both have to go for the same one. Yeah, I thought you were going to follow my lead, ya yeah, no, Naruto countered as he realized a looming shadow above them, they look up and saw the cursed puppet with his fist poised to strike, the blonde immediately slammed to Kimizuki barely dodging the swing. Good reaction and at the nick of time too, the seconded lieutenant commented as she graded the board. Excuse me second lieutenant Hanayori Sayuri, Sayuri turned her attention away from the exam as the private came to her to relay the message. Get of me idiot! Kimizuki yelled as he pried Naruto off. Yeah, you're welcome, TT Ibeo, Naruto said dryly as he picked up his partner up. The cursed puppet followed slowly as he was launch itself against the blonde and pinkette but instead abruptly halted which strangely happened with the rest of the dolls, which confused the participants greatly. Kimizuki go to the hospital ward immediately. Your sister Mirai has taken a turn for the worse, second lieutenant ordered urgently, noting the pity and sympathy in her voice. Naruto looked at Kimizuki, you have a sister? Shut up, bastard, Kimizuki replied harshly as he turned to the second lieutenant, please keep training, I apologize to everyone for the disruption. Kimizuki never got to finish his sentence as he was grabbed by his collar as Naruto verbally nagged at him, what the hell is wrong with you, if your sister is dying then she needs you more than ever right now. Shut up. This doesn't concern you. My goal is to impress everyone in this training exercise, Kimizuki said resolutely as he slapped Naruto's hand off him, it's the only things that matters. So you're abandoning your sister, Naruto scowled as he punched Kimizuki in the face with his right. That action would have made them fall if weren't for Naruto's quick action to hold onto his collar, getting him in eye distance. Listen to me asshole, because I'll only say it once. She's your sister, your kin and it's your responsibility as a brother to be there for her. She's everything you got in this world and you're just going to toss it away. Don't do something you'll regret. Or you'll end up alone, just like I was. Kimizuki was shocked as Naruto gave him melancholy look, even without his glasses he noted the sadness and pain that reflected from his blue eyes. He pried Naruto's hand of him and said, fine let's go. They ran and waited for hours, as Naruto silently watched Kimizuki at his sister's side, not daring to leave. The patient monitor was steady and flowing nicely, so it made Naruto had hope for the girl. He admitted he was surprised seeing her like this. Chains wrap around her hospital bed with wards and talismans that would keep off the virus from spreading. Seeing the markings around her face made him remember the unfortunate passing of many people. The doctor came in and walked around the room to face Kimizuki as he stroked her sister's burgundy locks of hair, where in the clear, it looks like she'll pull through for now but the equipment we have isn't made to combat this virus Kimizuki-kun. I understand doc, 
But soon I'll be joining the Moon Demon Company and then I can transfer her over to the military's medical facilities. So please, just take care of her a little while longer, Kimizuki begged as he got up and walked, giving her sister one last glance before leaving with the blonde in a tow. I'm glad she ended up being okay, Naruto said breaking the silence between Kimizuki as they walked, who would have thought that the guy acting like some badass wannabe chump was in the army just for her sister's health, that's very cool of you. This is your fault, Kimizuki said lowly as he looked down, I'm getting a bad evaluation because I've listened to you. I won't be eligible to join the Demon Moon Company, because of that my sister won't be saved soon. What the hell are you talking about, T.T. Ibeo? Naruto replied as Kimizuki turned to him, you've been devoting your life for a cure, have some hope damn it. No doubt your sister believes you in finding this cure so in return you have to believe in her that she can hold out. One bad evaluation doesn't mean the end of her life, get up and try again that's what I always do when there's an obstacle in my way. Don't go out there and say you give up, T.T. Ibeo. What, who said anything about giving up, Kimizuki chuckled a bit as he exhaled and let out his frustration, damn it. How did I end up stuck with you? You nosy little prick. Naruto's eye twitched at the jab of his stature but let it lie as Kimizuki wasn't finished, but you were right about not giving up yet. Really, did you hit yourself while saying that, T.T. Ibeo? Naruto jested lightly. Shut up Nimrod, I'll forget that you punched me since you got me to be with my sister and I'm grateful that you talked out in leaving the training room, Naruto quirked smile of the nice things Kimizuki was saying and I owe you an apology since you'll get a bad evaluation too. Ha ha, you can't evaluate pure awesomeness such as me salmon, Naruto said in big cocky grin. Man, can't you get any more annoying, underscore. We're really lucky this time, Shinoa cheerfully smiled as she reported in Gurren's office, there are two students fit to challenge a demon weapon of the Black Demon series, the same class as your sword, Lieutenant Colonel. Naruto and Kimizuki? Gurren said as he leaned his feet on his desk. They are both determined and beneath their tough exterior they're actually just giant teddy bears, Shinoa giggled at the last as she continued, speaking confidently. They'll surely be able to resist the temptation of the demon. I see, Gurren said in a smile that hid his ulterior motives, with those two joining the Demon Moon Company our strength will considerably, no doubt the knucklehead will now be considered its strongest member. Oh what makes you say that? Shinoa said, intrigued about the topic. He defeated me once, Gurren said honestly as he remembered the past four years and his surprising defeat. Though I'm still stronger, after all I still show more experience and I'm adept with my spells unlike that idiot. But he'll catch up, Shinoa said as she almost believed it. He's quite determined in getting what he wants. Now that's something I can't argue you with, Gurren as his smile became determined. I guess it's time for me to start preparing the groundworks in usurping the throne from the Hiragi clan. He opened his eyes, once again, he dreamt of the same eerie sewer that connected too many pipe and corridors. Naruto admitted he didn't like the place one bit for it reminded him of his isolation and loneliness. Though this time his dream was different, he heard a voice calling out to him. The blonde stood at his feet sloshing his way through the waters of the sewers as he could hear the whispers call out to him. Turn to your right. Naruto followed the directions diligently, a deep part of his mind told him that he shouldn't trust the voice of a stranger. After all that's how his parents raised him, but curiosity overwhelmed him back now for he had made the travel. He saw it more clearly, a tower of a statue. The same visor with the alphabet letter E in counterclockwise, looking eerily similar to a crown. Its locks of white hair waved and fluttered in the non-existent wind, as if it was alive. It had pectorals but it had no sternum connected. It also had jutted horns on its deltoids with thick armored arms. It had no abdominal instead in its place was a great fire that burned as fierce as the sun that was ignited by the tower, keeping the creature hovering in suspension. What the hell are you? The blonde muttered as he saw the being. It's you. Naruto eyes narrowed as he found the source of the voice as he looked to his front, seeing thick black vines covering the lower end of the tower of the statue. The vines were formed in a sphere-like prison that held in its prisoner. The blonde admitted, the prisoner's appearance startled him greatly, he was nothing but bare bones, a human skeleton that was looking straight at him with his socketless eyes, he wore a wispy black cloak that exhausted darkness and smoke-free button pins were attached to the left side of his hood. It's good to finally see you Naruto, the skeleton spoke as he rose from his lotus position. How do you know me? 
The blonde asked the prisoner. I know you because I was supposed to reap your soul, remember? The reaper motioned his skeleton hand casually. It was the day when your heart stopped beating. Naruto's eyes widened at the revelation as the missing memories were now resurfacing from his mind, he remembered. Shigur, help me restart his heart and Sayuri call the doctor. Gurren ordered as he tried to save the blonde from dying. Shigur knelt next to him as Gurren unzipped the dying blonde's hoodie for a clear view of his chest. Shigur worked fast she grabbed a good set of her senbons from her person and applied it in all the pressure points to restart his life. Gurren leaned to the child's chest could hear the faint beat coming from his heart, he almost held hope that the blonde would survive but the beat was gone. The lieutenant colonel had failed to seize his weapon against the vampires. Naruto blinked as he saw his body still in the ground, it didn't took long for him to realize that he was dead and strangely he wasn't sad nor scared, he accepted it for the selfish cause in seeing his family again. Humans are so interesting. Naruto turned and saw the grim reaper, his towering height dwarfing his short stature. The blonde blinked and asked, are you the grim reaper? The towering skeleton only glanced at the boy with his beady glowing orbs of light, yes. Are you going to take to my family? Who knows? It depends if you're going up or down. The reaper spoke bluntly. Just take my hand and see where we go. Naruto took his hand and they walked away from his body. For every step the blonde took with the reaper felt like hours upon hours, the memories of his life flashing by before his eyes. The day of his birth to the day of his death and leading to the road of what could have been if they escaped, Naruto and Mikaela side by side fighting for humanity's freedom and winning the battles till their adulthood and seeing himself getting married to Akane and Mikaela as the best man. Everything he saw could have been his future. Just go you idiot. Promise me that you'll live. Mikaela's last words finally echoed through the blonde's mind and halted his steps. The reaper took notice of the child's abrupt stop, he let out a long tired sigh, children are always more difficult than the adults. I'm sorry reaper, but I don't want to die today, the child spoke in absolute conviction. I'm sorry kid but your time is up, the reaper's voice took halt as the blonde faced him. His eyes shined bright like sapphires as his pupils disappeared in the glow with holy light pigmentation around his eyes along with lines that ran down. They glowed in ancient power and authority that the reaper wasn't sure in who he was facing. I will live. His voice echoed in power as if every word he uttered came from the heavens itself. Light shined the area and the reaper was engulfed by its divine power. The body of the blonde spasmed violently causing Gurren and Shigur to be startled in shock as they saw a pair of blurry blue eyes stare at them. As the missing blank of Naruto's memory surfaced the blonde boldly moved close to the cage as he saw the reaper. Sorry for doing that to you man, if I knew a way to break you out I would done it by now but I don't even know how I even put you here. Grim Reaper chuckled as he waved his hand, it's not a problem. I admit it gets lonely sometimes but at least I have something entertaining to watch. Seriously your story is like a manga and I can't help but to wonder on how it will end. My story isn't a manga, T.T. Ibeo. Naruto defensively spoke. You're a weird reaper, aren't you supposed to be angry at me? Not really, you kind did take me away from my job, the reaper spoke casually. You hate your job? Naruto said in surprise as the reaper nodded in confirmation, why though? Because I was once a human, the reaper said getting Naruto's eyes to widen in surprise surprised you know humans can become demons if their souls are wicked enough the devil is always looking into new demons to invest in his army naruto blinked at surprise and asked if that's so how did you become a reaper er sorry what's your name kuroki but you can shorten it to kuro if that makes you comfortable kuroki introduced himself to the blonde nice to meet you kuroki the blonde politely returned as he asked again so how did you become a reaper it was my sword who turned me into an immortal reaper, Kuroki stood as he lifted his hand and materialized a thick and long double-edged sword with a human skull as its rein and crossguard. It also sported a bronze insignia on its front flat. Its grip was the length of human spinal cord and a sacrum and tailbone as its pommel, it's called necromancer. Or saying it in English and not Japanese like Yojutsu Shi, Naruto said off-handedly. It's in English, Kuroki answered as he elaborated further. This sword was given to me by a shaman as I was searching for my brother. He told me that this sword was crafted by a servant of death and was granted the power to punish the wicked and gained the powers lesser of death of himself. 
After I died suddenly after the virus broke out the blade took pity on me and turned me into a reaper like I told you before. Holy hell, I want one. T.T. Ibeo. Naruto said excitedly as he eyed at the blade with greed. Gurren can take his cursed gears to someone else I want a sword like that. It's one of kind, Kuroki spoke getting the blonde to deflate as he gave a bitter smile, but, we can make an arrangement. That blonde perked up in interest, go on. This cage has me sealed inside but I can escape by possessing another being as my vessel, its compliance isn't a factor. Kuroki said calculatedly as Naruto pointed out. If you could have done that, why didn't you try to possess me? Oh two reasons really, one, I'm interested in your journey, two, you put me into this cage at ease you're too powerful for me to take possession unless I have permission but that does not matter, the reaper pointed out his reasons. So in order for me to possess someone I need to have demon enter your mind again, that other demon that came in was too weak for me to take as a vessel. I'm hoping that those back demon series are capable of holding my power. And if I let you possess this demon I get that sword. Naruto asked with a sly grin. Yes and a trustworthy ally that won't stab you in the back unlike a demon, Kuroki said as he offered his hand. Careful that makes me paranoid, Naruto joked as he took the reaper's hand and gladly shook it. Underscore, HQ entrance. Feels like I lost a few brain cells, Gurren spoke as he walked away from the mundane meeting, he rummaged his hair back to his casual look. Dynamic entry. Gurren knew that annoying voice ad as he timed his position and caught the blonde's leg, making Naruto hop for balance by his only free foot. There's no beating around the bush with you. Gurren set Naruto's leg free causing the teen to fail in grasping his balance and fell on his rear. It's kind of refreshing after dealing with pointless politics all day. Naruto hopped back up to his feet as he grumbled at his failure. Look I'll cut to the chase. I want a cursed gear. Trust me the demon won't be a problem when he faces up against me, T.T. Ibeo. Wow, that's probably the most arrogant thing I ever heard you say. You used to be so humble back then, where did I go wrong? Gurren chortled and continued on. You're that eager in going all Batman like on the vampires. Ha! Huh? Batman wishes he was cool as me, T.T. Ibeo. I beg to differ. Gurren shot down the blonde's ego. Seriously we need to get you a date, soon. Shut up Gurren. My love life is my business, the blonde defended. I better pacify this idiot before he makes a scene. Last thing I want is him getting the Haragi's attention. Gurren thought calmly as he spoke to the blonde. Fine let's go make a contract with a demon. Then you'll join us on the front lines. Is this a trick just to brush me off? Naruto spoke jadedly. Hey, I'm perfectly being honest here, Gurren said casually, I don't care if you haven't finished your training. That way is your fault that you died. Ha, huh, like I said the demon won't be a problem, he's going to wish he never even met me, T.T. Ibeo. Naruto said in confidence as he was about to walk the stairs. Well I'm off Gurren. Make good on your promise or else I'll prank you and you'll never see it coming. Hey you are strictly forbidden in touching anything that requires such act, Gurren yelled as a bead of sweat trailed his brow worriedly, last thing he needed was another pandemonium in his office. Don't piss me off then, then Blonde said offhandedly as he walked towards the main hall of the demon army to grab a bite to eat. As Naruto made it to the hall, his chirper mood was soured as he heard a familiar voice. My you look happy. Naruto turned to see the mischievous purplinette comfortably eating her tray. I was until you soured my mood, Naruto bluntly spoke as he leaned on the cafeteria table to the opposite side of Shinoa. Shinoa clutched her heart in a dramatic fashion and mocked, Oh heavens dear, I soured your mood how will I live on with my life? Your acting skills impress even me Shinoa, Naruto mimicked her form mockingly as he blandly stared at her, so what do you want? Oh nothing much, just wondering how you didn't end up in a fight with Gurren, Shinoa asked with curiosity. Did you blackmailed him? Naruto gave her sly smile that Shinoa compared to that of a fox, you can say that. Oh my, aren't you the sly one? Shinoa complimented as she picked her trait, congratulations by the way. On what? Blackmailing a superior officer, Naruto said with a smile. No silly, the demon contract, Shinoa corrected him, he finally approved it didn't he? Yeah. But sometimes Gurren can be a bit of a two faced sometimes, Naruto answered bluntly. Oh, stop talking nonsense. You can't fool me, I can tell you're bursting into seam. 
Shinoa cheerily said as she got close to Blonde and elbowed him lightly in the gut. Look who's talking nonsense now, Naruto said as he watched Shinoa go. Don't worry about it. Lieutenant Colonel Gurin may have a razor sharp tongue and general fondness for brutality, she turned back giving him a reassuring smile, but he always keeps his promises. Naruto blinked as he gave her a rare smile, same can go to me Shinoa. Shinoa's cheeks tinted a bit as she didn't know how to properly respond or take in his smile, what is this feeling? Underscore, 10 days later. But he always keeps his promises. Naruto rephrased Shinoa's words disdainfully as he walked to the halls of the class. Yeah right. I waited 10 days for an answer from him and still no call. That bastard has finally incurred my wrath for the last time. As the blonde entered the class and greeted second lieutenant Hanayori Sayuri, he made it to his desk and waited for the rest of his classmates to come. Okay everyone, I hope all of you studied tonight for the exams, Sayuri said cheerfully as she handed the tests to each student. Take your time in each question but if you don't know an answer to one then skip it and work on it later after you finished. Oh shit, I barely studied, Naruto thought in panic as he forgot about the crucial test he was too busy practicing his sword swings. Alright class you may now begin. Three hours have passed and Naruto didn't answer a single question for he didn't know a single to any of the question. And now 30 minutes have passed and the second lieutenant had finished grading them all. Alright pay attention. Sayuri spoke to the class as she stacked the tests, I already finished grading your written exams. So I'll just be handing those out and calling it a day okay. She then proceeded to go out and pass them as she continued, remember this test is crucial to your overall cursed gear ranking, the way you perform in class is just as important as in training. I expect those of you of less than passing grades to put extra effort in your studies from now on. Naruto gave a grim chuckle as he saw the zeros in his test, he was hoping for a miracle but it seems this wasn't going to be the case for him. The blonde saw a looming shadow and saw Shinoa standing over him with her mischievous grin. Naruto was immediately startled as he tried to stuff his test into his uniform but was immediately swiped by the Hiragi. Let me see, give it back Shinoa, Naruto cried out in embarrassment as he chased after the petite scythe wielder. Oh wow, would you look at the score, Shinoa said as she exaggerated her postures, how impressive. Seriously Shinoa, give that back, Naruto yelled as he tried swipe his tests back only to fail. You really outdone yourself, this is beyond the level of a superhuman. Shinoa laughed as everyone stared at her, curious over what the blonde made in his test. Quit being such pest, TT Ibeo, Naruto chased after her. Don't you want to share it? Shinoa mockingly waved the test to his as she used the second lieutenant to halt the blonde's speeding track you should be so proud. Give that back or else I'll turn you into mincemeat you shrimp, TT Ibeo. Naruto threatened as the second lieutenant wisely got out of his path long enough for him to finally catch up to Shinoa. Which was weird giving to the fact that she was a teacher and should have been taking charge of the situation and scolding them instead of casually letting it happen. Gurren needs to hire better staff. Oh wait it makes sense why she was hired. Naruto shook these thoughts as he grabbed Shinoa's wrist and yanked her to his side causing the girl to not only frown but whimper but the blonde didn't buy it for a second as she smiled and exposed her hands right after that. He only wrote his name. Man he must be a special kind of dumb if he didn't answer all these questions. Naruto's face reddened in embarrassment as he rushed and retrieved his test back. Stuffing them in his pocket the blonde marched at the end of the classroom and glared at Shinoa who was smiling innocently with her hands on her cheeks like nothing had happened. What the hell's your problem? Can't you find someone else to annoy, TT Ibeo? Now is that any way to talk to a lady, Shinoa said as she spread her hands but remained glued to her cheeks. Especially for one who is trying to help you interact more with the classroom. You could show some gratitude. I don't need to give you gratitude. How many times do I have to tell you? It won't matter because I will get my cursed gear at the end of the day. Naruto pointed out to her but it was obvious Shinoa chose to ignore his convincing argument. Yeah and how is that working out for you so far? Shinoa jabbed causing the blonde's expression to crumble. Just shut up Shinoa. Naruto said Pat and come up with a better rebuttal. Nope, I have way too much fun teasing you. Shinoa gave him a Cheshire grin as she continued. Seriously it's like picking on a child. You're the child. Especially with your height, Naruto rebutted as he childishly slammed his fist on her desk, rude. Come on it makes sense that you failed, 
Yoichi said, joining the conversation as Shinoa and Naruto looked at him, especially Naruto who was a bit hurt by Yoichi's word. Sorry that didn't come out like I mean it to. I'm just saying that since you spent several years as a prisoner of the vampires your Japanese reading and writing skills aren't as strong as your English and Latin are, so it makes sense that you failed and the reason why you couldn't answer a single question, you probably haven't understood our writing yet. Ah. Truth is actually, Naruto wanted to hide his shame but he couldn't really lie. Seriously if you didn't know how to read, why didn't you just say so? Kimizuki criticized the blonde as he looked at his test sheets. I know how to read. Naruto swiped back his test from Kimizuki. Then why the hell is your sheet blank then? Cuz I forgot to study okay. Naruto yelled embarrassedly as Kimizuki gave him disbelieving look. That's probably one of the poorest excuses I've heard and if the same happened to me I could still easily answer the majority of these questions. Oh yeah then show me your grades then salmon. Naruto demanded, let's see how smart you really are. See for yourself. Kimizuki gestured as he nudged his test sheet with his feet which all had 100 points each, Latin, English, and Japanese spell craft, easy stuff. Naruto pride took a hit in that moment but Kimizuki decided to add another one as he answered honestly, foreign languages aren't even my strong suit, and they should be no match for season study rock poser like you. Naruto growled at that, yeah I admit that I'm not all that smart but the real shame is that you got beaten by an idiot like me, shame on you Kimizuki. No doubt your families are turning up on their graves. Oh that does it. Kimizuki got up from his chair and imposed his taller stature to the blonde who didn't seem to be phased by his height instead it seemed to annoy him more. This time the fight's going to end in my favor. Ha. Huh. You can't even walk the walk and talk the talk salmon. Naruto growled as he butted heads with Kimizuki. Ruto please stop fighting. Yoichi frowned at his friend behaviors around each other. As Yoichi tried to break up the fight between Naruto and Kimizuki, the second lieutenant Hanayori was facing difficulty to inform her students, Ah, oh, by the way I haven't dismissed you from class yet. Hold that insult Kimizuki, Naruto told as he faced the second lieutenant and spelled out on what his face told, Are you serious? You're the teacher of a classroom. The most logical thing a person would do is break this fight up instead of casually dismissing us. I can't believe I'm saying this but he has point. Kimizuki said in rare agreement with the blonde. The second lieutenant was a bit startled by the reply as all the students were now staring intently at her and all them noting that the blonde was quite right. Geez does everyone who hangs are hired by Gurren really incompetent, Naruto said as he surprised the teacher's lack of spine. Heck she needed tips from the teacher of second Shibuya High as he had the nerve to berate him for his attitude. Hey, I can hear you morons down the hall, Gurren came to the door as he asked, what's the deal? Look what the cat dragged in, Gurren's rare presence too. The reckoning, Naruto exaggerated as Shinoa and a few burst out laughing. Everybody please quiet down, the second lieutenant raised her voice as it got a raised brow from Gurren who stared at him with admiring eyes. Welcome back Lieutenant Colonel Gurren, I hope everything went well. Oh look everybody she found her spine, Naruto pointed out as he got pinched by the shoulder by Yoichi. Ow, what the hell? Stop being rude. Yoichi scolded his blonde friend. As well as you expect, Gurren answered to the second lieutenant, so what the hell is going on with all the racket around here? Those two, Sayuri quickly pointed. Gurren gave a deep groan, I should have known. I think you should also know that she didn't try to stop the fight instead she tried to dismiss us in general, the blonde pointed out as he elbowed by both of his friends. Be quiet, we have better things to complain about. Kimizuki said as he looked at the lieutenant colonel, with all due respect, I think you owe us an explanation. You have an obligation to this class. You left over 10 days without any regard for your students, I think giving us some cursed gear will make up for that. Really, you think a bunch of dumbass losers like you have what it takes to tangle with a demon, huh? Gurren commented snidely. Shut up Gurren, Naruto called out as he stared the lieutenant colonel down. I'm not sure about Kimizuki but I know I can do it so quit sitting on your chair with your thumb on your ass and give me the damn fucking cursed gear like I asked, tt ebayo. Wow, aren't you demanding today, Gurren commented. Give me what I want and I won't have to pester your ass for it, tt ebayo, the blonde replied. Gurren blinked and decided to ask Sayuri, so what's your assessment, can this class resist the demon's temptation? Second Lieutenant Sayuri hummed as she answered. 
there's always room for improvement but those two are stronger than I was at 16, I think they can do it. What about the others? There are a few contenders but Saotome Yoichi takes the cake, he has a surprisingly high stability against demons. Naruto lightly punched Yoichi as he was bit surprised by the praise. Really, okay then why don't we give it a shot now? Guren said as he gripped Mihiru no yo, it's less complicated that way. No, you can't do that in the classroom, second lieutenant Sayuri yelled in shock. Oh my, are you planning to attack? Shinoa asked as she got up from her seat giddily, this sure got interesting fast. Hope you're ready kids, Guren said as he released Mihiru no yo from her scabbard and her evil wisp of energy was released inside the classroom. If you die from this, blame yourself for not training hard enough. Fuck you, do your worse. Naruto defiantly said as Gurren smirked sadistically and plunged his sword to the floor and at an instant the fabric of the floor warped momentarily and engulfed the room into an ominous glow of purple as the black thralls withered all over the room causing all the students in a hysteria of panic. One by one they all fell into unconsciousness or maybe had died the blonde wasn't sure as he saw all his classmates go down, damn, this isn't good. Shit, it feels like my heart's being squeezed. Kimizuki agonized as he leaned towards the table for support. What's wrong with everybody? Yoichi asked worriedly as his classmates pass out from pain. Second Lieutenant Haniyori Sayuri wasn't faring any better as she was using a ward to resist the overwhelming demonic power of Mihiru no Yo. I think that's enough for now, Gurren said as he sheathed back the blade to its scabbard and all light returned to the room. Many of the students were groaning and passed out of shock and only six were left standing. All right good you're still conscious, you got a chance. Make no mistake you got a long way to go but if you continue to train and study your spell craft, you can move into the contract ceremony for a cursed gear. The five of you who are still in their feet you just earned yourself four stars. You'll get to try out for a black demon series cursed gear, the same rank of weapon as my sword. Gurren complimented until the last two students legs gave out and dropped on the floor making the lieutenant colonel retract his statement earlier. Well I guess there's only three, Naruto, Kimizuki, and Yoichi. Gurren gave glance to Shinoa who smiling as always, Humph, I wish you would passed out. Shinoa let out a small laugh as Gurren disappointment, dealing with demons is like a day at the beach with you isn't it? Guess I shouldn't expect much from General Haragi's daughter, you probably didn't even use a ward. What a turn off. Shinoa watched the lieutenant colonel leave as she replied with her big doe eyes, Ah, oh, don't be that way. You know I'm the cutest thing you ever seen in your life. Piss off. Gurren replied back causing the girl to laugh, let's go before I change my mind. Your dad is General Haragi, Naruto asked stupidly as he stopped and see Shinoa. Wow you noticed that just now you idiot, Gurren said in disbelief. I didn't know, Yoichi supported honestly. Shinoa made a sly smile as she put her hands on her hips, Ah, oh, you figured out my secret, I'm not just a sergeant. I'm basically royalty, now feel free to worship me as much as you like. Naruto gave a sigh as he stared Shinoa's eccentric pose, uh, I wish I didn't ask that question now. Take us where we need to be Gurren. Shinoa pouted cutely, what kind of reaction is that? What a turn off. Welcome to the club, Gurren said as he was about to open the door until he was stopped by his retainer Sayuri. So a uh, lieutenant colonel Gurren. I know I should expect unconventional test and tactics from you but I'm not entirely sure of letting Yoichi try out for the Black Demon series is a good idea, Second Lieutenant Sayuri voiced. Do you have a problem with my decision? Gurren replied startling Sayuri and made her chose her words wisely. No sir that's not what I'm saying, it's just that I'm not certain the Yoichi has enough strength to accept the demon. Tough. Gurren cut her off and continued, if he doesn't have the strength then he dies. That's the kind of world we live in, we're not playing games here. Naruto stared at Yoichi as he was a bit quiet over the conversation that was taking place. Lieutenant Colonel Gurren, demons hate weaklings. Shinoa commented getting Yoichi to gasp in hurt, he'll end up being possessed instead of the other way around. For crying out loud, Gurren grumbled as he intensely stared at Yoichi, Yoichi, tell me, do you still want to avenge your sister's death from the hands of the vampires don't you? Yoichi nervously answered, yes, of course. All right, are you willing to die for it? Yoichi hesitated and answered honestly, I don't know. Then you should quit right now. If you have any doubts then stay in this classroom and help your classmates see the medical facility. 
Naruto wanted to encourage Gurren's words but two things stopped him from doing it one was that it would made him a hypocrite and be denying Yuichi's own wishes, something the blonde couldn't just stand. Second was the childish reason, agreeing with Gurren was never going to happen after all he kept him waiting for his cursed gear. So the blonde decided to pick his words and ask, Hey Yuichi, why did you come and help me when the vampire broke inside second Shibuya High? Yuichi blinked as his friend asked the random question, he took his time and answered, well it's just that it didn't sit right with me. The blonde blinked as Yuichi continued, seeing you go there and fight the vampire made me feel helpless and I didn't like that feeling. Then step forward and change then, Naruto encouraged, don't listen to Gurren, the only thing that you should listen to is in your heart and don't give up on it Yuichi. That's how you will stop feeling useless. Even though the blonde wasn't that self-absorbed in his speech he still failed to notice the stares he got from the group. As they all stared at him and could all agree that Naruto was a pretty good motivational speaker. Yoichi don't come out from under the bed for any reason. Those were the last words Sautome Tomo had said to Yoichi as she was killed by the vampire. Even if I try to forget about in my sleep I can still see it, I'm still under the bed, frightened. Yoichi thought as his past feelings were currently mixing with Naruto's words. Well looks like your speech didn't work Naruto, Gurren commented offhandedly and harshly told Yoichi, get out of here if you're that much of a wimp. I don't need to listen to you, Yoichi yelled back getting everyone by surprise sans Naruto who was smirking, this is my choice and I want to do it, this is the only way I'll get the strength I need. I have to make sure that there's nothing in this world that can take away the people I hold dear ever again. Naruto turned away and gave a bitter smile, and I just want people to stop dying around me. Gurren lowered his stare as he gave a smirk at Yuichi's attitude, alright, let's keep moving people, it's time for the ceremony. Underscore, hey getting cold feet now isn't going to help, Naruto said as he slapped Yuichi's back to knock him out of his stupor as the elevator went down. There's no point worrying about it, deal with it, you made your choice, Kimizuki added to the conversation. Are you sure you are able to deal with it Kimizuki? Shinoa asked a tallest member of the three, you were standing first but then you leaned over, was the demon too much for you to handle? Kimizuki blinked in surprise as he was sure no one was watching, you saw it too, right Yoichi? Yoichi hummed in thought as he remembered, yeah you're right. Kimizuki was immediately flustered as he yelled, stop paying attention to the small things. They weren't the only ones who saw it Kimizuki, Naruto's smug tone dripped as he added his own part of the story, in fact I remember you saying that you were in a lot of agony. The last thing you should be doing is getting comfortable Naruto, Gurren berated. The demon that you'll be making with a contract will be a lot stronger than the last one. If you let your guard down and it will kill you in an instant. Ha, huh, save your concerns Gurren, Naruto grinned as the doors of the elevator opened, it's the demon that will die in an instant. Welcome to the edge of hell, Gurren introduced to the scenery of a large ominous room with seven massive ogre heads overlooking its own weapon that were all tied by a thin red thread that rested in a container of sand. What kind of messed up temple is this, T.T. Ibeo, Naruto commented as the place gave him the creeps. It's the home of the thing you want, the most the highest ranking weapons of demons are kept in here. The highest ranking huh? Naruto said as he looked over the massive ogre head, if I have one of these then that means I have the chance in killing a vampire. That depends on your personal skill. Okay, I get that part but they're all the same brand as your sword right? Yes the rare black demon series. Gurren turned to them with an annoyed expression, quit asking question and let's get started already, I got more important things to do than hang around in a dark cellar with a group of newbies. Don't worry about it Gurren just tell us what we're supposed to do and you'll get your daily beauty sleep, T.T. Ibeo, Naruto drawled. Pick a weapon you like and enter the spell circle, once you touch the weapon the contract seal will begin automatically. If you don't lose to the demon then you'll gain its power. Then what if we do lose, Kimizuki questioned his concern. Then you'll either become a man-eating monster or the demon's power will crush your soul and kill you, Gurren chuckled darkly, either way the outcome will end up you being dead, if you monster on us then I'll kill you myself. Ha, huh, you can die trying Gurren, Naruto boasted as he followed Kuroki's voice who pointed him to the most suitable cursed gear in the cellar, already walked the stairs the blonde eyes lusted over not of the generic sword but of the power he will gain from it, today marks the end of the vampire's era and begins my coming of age over the fear the vampires will feel fear from me as they see my face. Then draw and it will begin.
My name is Hayakuya Naruto and today your power is mine for me to use, T.T. Ibeo. Naruto roared as he drew the blade and the contract circle immediately lit in power. Underscore. Shattering of the glass was heard dead in the night. Two children were frightened by the events as they heard the clatter downstairs and especially the oncoming footsteps on the stairs. The eldest gasped as she looked at her baby brother and acted quickly and put him under the bed and gently touched his cheek, don't come under here no matter what. She gave him one last smile as her little brother whispered in vain, wait sister. The door opened abruptly startling the child making him to quickly hush himself as he saw the heavy footstep come close to her sister's, as she whimpered and was lifted up. The boy couldn't see but he could hear the faint sound of flesh being bitten and sucked, the blood dripping from the floor only confirmed it. Hey Lacus, headquarters is checking and they want an update, he heard someone called out from the door getting the vampire Lacus to drop the lifeless body on the floor, now of all times, figures. It's always in the middle of eating, am I right Renee? The boy watched the vampires leave but his sight lingered on the vampire called Lacus before he shifted his attention to his sister's corpse, no this can't be happening. As the boy tried to reach out her sister eyes opened immediately startling the younger sibling and spoke, so, here we are Yoichi, reliving your most traumatic memory in detail right down to the blood splatter on the floor. Huh, Tomo you're alive, before Yoichi could feel any joy and relief he was dragged out of the bed and lifted up by his sweater. Because of you she's dead now. Yoichi blinked as he was now changed to his current age. Underscore, Kimizuki's trial. Kimizuki looked at the ruins of the city of his glassless windows, feeling the air howling through his hair and clothes until a weak voice called for a change of his attention. Is that you big brother? I'm sorry Mirai, I didn't mean to wake you up, Kimizuki apologized as he went and took seat by her side. You didn't, how are you feeling, not too bad, I think it's going to be a good day for us, Mirai responded. I do too, Kimizuki agreed as he rose from the chair, I bet you're hungry. How about I make you something to eat, okay? Brother, Kimizuki turned as her sister Mirai called, why don't you leave me here alone to fend for myself so you can move on with your life? Don't start with this, taking care of you is my duty, Kimizuki argued. But if things don't change you'll end up dead too. No buts Mirai, I'm gonna make sure we both survive, Kimizuki said as he looked at her sister's tears. Mirai closed her eyes as she spoke, you don't mean that, not really. She stared him with her grieved expression as she pointed out, at night I hear you cry, about how much you want to leave. You groaned to hate me, you wished I just died already. Kimizuki was shocked as he saw sister's sinister smirk, why, why would you say that? Mirai walked out of the bed and spoke, because no matter how much noble you try to be, deep down you're a selfish human who only thinks of himself, isn't that right Kimizuki Shiho? Now I get it, you're the demon. Bingo but I was right about your thoughts wasn't I see every shameful thing that's floating in your little brain. I wonder what your sister would say if she knew the truth. Shut the hell up, underscore. Seller, interesting. Gurren observed Kimizuki hands trembling under his weapon and stared at the other two who looked as still as corpses, at least one of them appears to be putting up a fight. Underscore, Naruto's trial. Naruto wasn't sure how long he walked into the cloudy scenery until finally someone made contact with him. It's good to see ya. Naruto turned seeing reality change an instant to the Hayakuya orphanage and saw young Michaela stroking a bear affectionately until he stared at him, even if you did run off and leaves us to die with the vampires. Well yo told me to do it, Naruto said offhandedly as he turned to face his brother, blame yourself for your own weakness. Wow that was pretty harsh, Michaela chuckled, I was hoping to shake you up by touching on a sore part but you don't appear the least bit rattled. I wonder why is that exactly? A demon already tried it, but unlike you he brought the entire family. Then was all about that rude comment earlier. I thought demons were smart and cunning, the insult was to serve as a hint but now it turns out your brain is slower than a turtle to catch the hint. Fake Michaela's sweet smile turned into a sneer as he threatened, I see, listen you little shitstain you better watch your mouth before I decide to take my sweet time in torturing your soul to damnation. Ooh, I'm so afraid see my legs tremble, tt ebao. The blonde mocked. You should be. But I'm not, really, why is that exactly? Because the grim reaper is at your door. Fake Michaela blinked before he burst into laughter, his disguise fell and showed his true image. It was androgynous little boy with long purple hair, red eyes, fangs, and pointed ears. 
He wore a hairband formed of two parallel golden strips that matched the horns piercing through his hair from the edge of his hairline. He was wearing a sleeveless open back dress with a collar covering his throat. The chest piece was black while the rest of the dress was in white. The gown split open at his outer thighs, freeing his legs for movement. He was also wearing black sleeves separated from the gown that reached his mid-upper arms and came down to his arms to his middle fingers, where each sleeve is attached to a ring. He stumbled in his bare feet. You're one hell of a comedian human, but Asuramaru will stop delaying the inevitable and take over your soul. Your name is Asuramaru, formerly known as Teps Asura, I used to be a vampire before I turned into a demon. Huh, makes things easier then, Naruto sighed of relief. What makes things easier? Asuramaru arched a brow, wondering what the human was talking about. Take a step forward and see for yourself turtle brain. Asuramaru growled as he took one step and immediately regretted it as he felt a cold hand wrapped around his small neck and lifted him from the floor. I told you so, Naruto said as he stared Asuramaru desperately gasping for breath and looked at the blonde's ice cold blue eyes, sorry. If things gone differently I would have taken your power but I just need you for Kuroki to take over your body and one last thing, there can only be one Asura in this world. A Suramaru voice howled as Kuroki the Grim Reaper morphed himself into a dark cloud and immediately invaded the demon's body, completely taking over and changing his form while at it. Naruto that Kuroki's human form had dull pink hair that covered his eyes with a healthy tan and good athletic build. His clothing was eccentric and quite modern to say at least as he was wearing a navy eight-point cap with three button pins, a navy swallowtail jacket with his left sleeve rolled up with red and white, vertical striped pants. He had a small brown bag strapped to his back, a pyramid belt with a skull design at the tip and steel-toed navy shoes to match. How'd I look? Kuroki asked in a rather human voice. You don't look like a demon. The blonde commented honestly until Kuroki lifted his cap and showed his small black horns, never mind, you got the part. Kuroki smirked as he raised his fist for a bump, as long as there isn't any dog I'm here to defend you Naruto. What the hell are you talking about? Naruto asked as he bumped his fist Kuroki and White Flash engulfed them both. Underscore, seller. A powerful wave of energy lighted the circle that Naruto was rested at and the katana in his hand transformed into a giant sword of death. The wave of power startled Gurren, Shinoa, and Kimizuki, who just finished his trial. Naruto woke and rose from the circle and stood proud as he hefted his sword at his shoulder, feeling the wave of power surge through his body. He felt like he can do anything. He calmly walked down there plastered on his face. Okay I'll bite, what the hell is wrong with that sword? Gurren voiced as he knew for sure that was not a Suramaru, and don't try to hide it or else I'll confiscate the sword for research to take a peek at what's wrong with it. Oh it's nothing complicated, a reaper just happened to offer me his power, Naruto said it like he was talking about the weather. Bullshit and even if a reaper lend its power to you, how the hell did you even meet one? Gurren asked, as he couldn't believe he was actually entertaining the idea. The day I died from blood loss four years ago when we first meet, Naruto answered bluntly causing Gurren eyes to widen in realization, what do you think by some miracle my heart restarted? Nah I just asked the reaper to give me another chance and he was okay with it and brought me back. I don't believe you, Gurren said flatly. Okay. Okay all jokes aside I don't know really, the reaper told me something about it wasn't my time and my destiny blah, 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 something, something, Naruto said lamely. Okay then why is he with you and what did he do to Asuramaru? Gurren asked more question. Girly boy is alive. Kuroki is using as a host and for why he is with me is simple, I'm irresistible, the blonde finished it with a sly smile. So do you believe me? No, but I guess I have two before I die with a headache trying to figure it out, Gurren said with a sigh. Suit yourself, Naruto casually dismissed as he went on and met Kimizuki. A grim reaper named Kuroki? I don't believe you, Kimizuki immediately said. Naruto frowned as he snarked, wow. Yeah a demon would totally just make as much sense wouldn't it? Okay, fair point, Kimizuki agreed getting the blonde to smile. So what do you think of it? Are you jealous? Naruto bragged. With you as its wielder? Not really I'm fine with Kasekio right here, Kimizuki tapped to his sheathed twin swords. What, you got twin swords? Naruto said in awe. What's the matter? Are you jealous? Kimizuki said in his own smug tone. Naruto grumbled as he honestly answered, 
Yeah a little bit, I'm just pretty good at dual wielding. Hey that was pretty honest of you, Kimizuki said as he tried to hide his surprise, tough break, are you good at wielding that thing without weighting you down? Well that's the odd thing about it, it's light as a feather, Naruto noted as he took his distance and swung the sword like it was nothing. Huh, how convenient of it. Yeah totally, the blonde agreed as he asked, by the way where is Yoichi? Is he finished yet? Kimizuki guided him with his sight as Naruto turned to see and spotted Yoichi still in the circle asleep. Underscore, Yoichi's trial. The fake Tomo clicked the lamp on and off in a mundane fashion as quite some time has passed already. So then, who are you? Yoichi asked after all this time. The demon blinked and faced to his side and answered, You're the one who called me Yoichi, if you want to avenge your sister's death then you'll need a strong set of cursed gear to wield. Oh that's right I picked up a weapon and was going to make a contract. Oh right I see, that's what you are, a demon, Yoichi said remembering the earlier events. That's right. Yoichi smiled sadly as he pointed out the obvious, it's pretty mean that you chose to look like this. Just wait until you see my true form, the fake Tomo said. Yoichi laughed a little as he scratched his cheek, yeah, I bet it's pretty nasty. Fake Tomo frowned, not about Yoichi's comment but at the situation they were in, so it seems we have a bit of a problem. Huh? Yoichi blinked. I looked over your heart and soul, you want to strike back at those who hurt you but that desire is too weak, fake Tomo rose from her chair and leaned closely to Yoichi, making the boy uncomfortable in the situation, your soul is gentle and kind. You have great love for others. These are all qualities that I despise. Wait, maybe you should look deeper because I do want to avenge my sister, Yoichi tried to reassure. You lie, the demon said smoothly and assuredly, in fact the strongest feeling you have is the relief that you survived the attack. No, that's no true, Yoichi stuttered as he took several step back from the demon. Not to mention you'll make a terrible fighter, you're afraid of conflict and the thought of your friends and family getting hurt. You're weak you don't have the courage to take a life. How are you supposed to take revenge if you aren't capable of killing? The demon gave a dark smile as her negative energy seeped through the room, what I really mean is that you're a coward, just a child without a backbone, a weakling. Yoichi immediately cowered as he saw the dark mist thickened around the room and tried his best to back away. But there is one way to bring upon hell by those who murdered your sister. Give me your body, forever. Yoichi cried out as the demon speared its hand through his heart seeing the dark mist escape at the end, you don't even have the guts to fight for your life, you wouldn't make a suitable master, you're the most pathetic human being I ever met. Yoichi only whimpered as his tears streamed form his cheek. Underscore, seller, in the contract seal where Yoichi rested, has failed his trial as he opened his eyes and showing his pupils turned into slits under the influence of the possession. The giant face of the ogre that guarded the weapon had suffered an abrupt deep crack upon its visage, instantly alerting everyone in the cellar. A cloud of dust covered the area but they all saw the shadowy figure of Saotome Yoichi until he disappeared. Oh man this is not good, Gurren spoke as he began to inform the two clueless idiots, looks like Yoichi didn't have the strength to overcome possession, but I guess having two out three students pass the black demon tryouts isn't that bad at all. Where the hell is Yoichi, T.T. Ibeo? Naruto said in a mix of worry and impulsiveness. One, two, three, four little humans all for me, damn it and they each have cursed gear too. Power hungry humans are such a pain in the ass. Gekoin hissed to himself as he raised his hand forward and gathered his power, my bow. Alright now that you two have your cursed gear it's time for your first mission, there's a human eating demon loose in this room. Gurren informed them of the details as he ordered, Naruto, Kimizuki, is up to you to deal with it show that bastard who is in control. Gurren pointed at the possessed Yoichi's location without looking back. They'll be my appetizers and the real feast will begin. Demon sadistically said as he released an arrow at his targets. Yoichi snap out of it. Naruto cried out as he noticed the featured horns and markings present Yoichi's face before the arrow struck causing a kinetic explosion in the area. Gurren stood unparalleled with Mihiru no Yo drawn from its sheath as the cloud of smoke had split from his swing while Naruto and Kimizuki looked less than stellar as they were rattled by the explosion. Yoichi took a grand leap and jumped over the next ogre head and drew his bow in position, releasing two green arrows at the same time that aimed for Naruto and Kimizuki in their own perspective view. Kimizuki behind me, 
Naruto ordered which Kimizuki reluctantly agreed. The explosion ringed as the seeping dust filled the area. Well great, looks like this demon is coming at us at full force. Yoichi just must have been a snack to feed his appetite, Gurren observed at the power the demon was packing. Lieutenant Colonel, may I speak my opinion? Shinoa addressed in a rare serious tone. Please don't, quiet. Gurren denied firmly. The situation is getting out of control. Shinoa frowned at his callous attitude. A strong force blew the dust cloud away as Naruto and Kimizuki stood at its center unharmed. That's a neat form, Kimizuki commented. I know, be jealous, the blonde grinned cheekily as he and Kimizuki took a split in order to waver the demon's aim. Yoichi's face split into a grin as he shot his next arrow which he successfully blocked. Gurren, how'd I stop him? Gurren gave the blonde an incredulous look causing the blonde to scowl, don't give me that look, Yoichi is still one of us, T.T. Ibeo. Look at him, Gurren harshly replied as he continued, your classmate's body is just a vessel now, the only way to save Yoichi now is to destroy him. Forget I asked you then Gurren, Naruto growled as he stared at his possessed friend, I'll save Yoichi myself. Don't get soft on me, this is the Moon Demon Company extermination is your job, Gurren lectured as Naruto and Kimizuki dodged another arrow, or all you just talk and came here to play around with cursed gear. If you want to get killed then that's on you but that monster is not your friend anymore. Damn it. Kimizuki cursed as he released Kaseki O from its sheath. If you're serious of using those weapons then show me you got what it takes to be a soldier. So being a soldier means following orders and regulations, huh? Naruto said out loud as he looked at Yoichi dead in the eye, then you can count me out Gurren, I'll break any rule if it means doing the right thing. I don't care if I get spit on or belittled by the very same people I tried to save, I'll be a pile of trash and crap and live with it. The Japanese Imperial Army and you can fuck itself in the ass if you guys give me the order to abandon the people I hold precious to my heart, I'm no longer the boy who ran away from his family four years ago and helpless before that. I want to atone my past mistakes, I'm not going to be worse than trash again. Everyone was stunned to say the least and they weren't sure what to say over Naruto's grudgingly inspiring words. The demon that seemed to possess Yoichi wavered as its control and influence wavered before he shook it like a bad headache. That human needs to die, Gekoin hissed as he steadied his aim at the blonde and released his arrow. The arrow's aim was dead set on the blonde's heart but never made its target as Kimizuki interfered with its trajectory causing the demon to curse and Naruto blink at surprise for the sudden help, alright Naruto, let's do it your way then. Naruto blinked again before a warm smile, thanks Kimizuki, it means a lot. Don't get mushy on me idiot and let's focus more on saving Yoichi. Kimizuki shied away as he leapt towards the possessed Yoichi. Gekoin released two shots from his bow which Kimizuki timed his strikes perfectly and deflected them away and built momentum as he took a spin and clashed with great force with Gekoin's bow. The demon smiled as he pushed of the clash and spun around and lashed out a spinning back kick to Kimizuki's gut, causing the male to come crashing down. Gekoin frowned as his sixth sense tingled and looked behind seeing Naruto behind him poised to strike. Let go of Yoichi you monster, he's one of us, T.T. Ibeo. Naruto roared as he brought his massive sword down in strike causing the demon to block with his bow causing a backlash of the equal force of power and the blonde capitalized on the moment as he swiftly took a strike and disarmed the demon, all right. You idiot. Gurren reprimanded as he barked, don't let up, the demon is not inside the weapon anymore it's in his body. Naruto cursed as he was swept by his leg by the possessed Yoichi and swung him down on the floor. The blonde was immediately caught by Kimizuki which Naruto gave him a glance of thanks as they saw the demon come down on the floor with a laugh. Interesting, you really believe you can actually save him, the demon said snidely, how foolish humans have become. I'll tell you this asshole you chose the wrong body to hijack under my watch, Naruto pointed his blade necromancer determinately. I'm gonna kick your ass so hard I'm going to make you sing the blues. Gekoin giggled as he materialized his bow and aimed. Come and try me you dirty human. Shinoa frowned as she voiced her displeasure at Gurren not acting upon the current situation. Lieutenant Colonel, these boys are going to get themselves killed. They're not ready for this, please don't make kill Yoichi, he's their friend. Ah, oh, you always act like you're so cool but you have soft spot for these two problem students. Gurren mocked as the current battle raged between the demon Gekoin and team up between Naruto and Kimizuki, you got an attached, 
haven't you? Lieutenant Colonel, Shinoa argued. Why don't you step in and kill him then that will save the others being racked with guilt? Gurren offered to the petite scythe wielder who scowled at his offer causing him to gain a smug smile. Oh I see, you have no intention in getting your hands dirty either. Let me guess, you're just too cute for this as well. Shinoa stayed silent as she watched the battle from the front lines. Yoichi, I know you can hear me so get yourself together and fight back for your body, Naruto pleaded. It's too late blondie, Gekoin spoke as he drew his bow, now die. Naruto plunged Necromancer on the floor as he spoke, you won't do it. The demon only laughed at the blonde's desperate kamikaze attitude. Are you crazy? Kimizuki yelled as he ran to the blonde's side where he was followed by Shinoa at the opposite side with her scythe materialized. Yoichi, I know how you feel, Naruto said as he continued, feeling the guilt in not protecting the thing you cared about most in this world and having to be glad to survive, knowing how selfish it sounds. I feel that every day in my life so please let me ask you again, why did you come and help me when the vampire broke inside second Shibuya High? Yoichi's body trembled as the words of his Naruto took his toll on his mind and remembered seeing the blonde go back to the school as the panic started over the escaped vampire and he didn't hesitate to go back because he wanted to do the right thing, he thought he was courageous and even heroic. Yoichi wanted the strength that Naruto had, he wanted to feel just as powerful as him. Yoichi listen, no matter what happens don't come out under here. Yoichi returned back to his dream, reliving his sister last moments and words. I'm sorry but I can't stay, no more hiding. I'm not gonna run away like those years before. Yoichi confessed from the bottom of his heart. That's why I want the ability to protect those I care about. I want to keep them safe from harm and only then I can make sure nothing like this ever happens again. Give me that power you demon. Yoichi gained back control and he accidentally misfired his arrow that missed Naruto several meters. The blonde smiled as he saw Yoichi come down crying and embraced him with a hug as he sniveled on his shoulder. Naruto didn't pry him off like he usually did and instead consoled him, there, there. No way, Shinoa said in awe. Did he just beat it? Kimizuki asked as he saw Yoichi ball himself out. All right, that's enough man you did a good job, Naruto reassured. I shot at you, Yoichi said shakily at his previous actions. I don't really mind, all that matters is that you're in one piece. Naruto lightly put it as Yoichi let go of his embrace. Come on let's go play some video games at my place, want to join Kimizuki? Kimizuki blinked as gave a deep sigh, sure why not, I got some time to kill. As the three newly cursed gear wielders were celebrating, Shinoa went to Gurren's side and asked, did you know it would end this way lieutenant colonel? What? Hell no, Gurren denied immediately, I don't give a damn if these kids ends up biting it. You say that but you look like you were starting to sweat there at the end of it. Shinoa pointed out as Gurren walked away. Naruto noticed Gurren and became a bit hostile as Yoichi saw that the lieutenant colonel was staring at him and spoke. You have a rare gift. The guilt you had for your sister was preventing you from living your life but I think today you overcame that. Maybe now you'll be able to reach your full potential, you have a new reason to live, for now on it's your job to protect the people who saved you today. Forget revenge, don't get hung up on something so pointless. Gurren then Starblonde cut him off, I don't want to hear it alright. Keep doing what you're doing Naruto, the blonde eyes widened slightly in shock as he stared at the lieutenant colonel, follow your heart and protect this bond and the many others you will have with the demon moon company and put us first even before your own life, we're your family now. Live by your creed and move forward to the future and stop living in the past. It's not easy as it looks, Naruto said lowly as he remembered his family, but I promise you this, I'll protect all of you. Gurren smiled as he then informed upon his decision, okay, well you all got cursed gear and you also worked as a team today, I suppose we should test you out on the front lines and see what you're made of. Now you're talking, TT Ibeo, Naruto exclaimed excitedly. That's right, we got intel that suggests vampires from the Kansai region are planning on reclaiming Shinjuku, it's our job to investigate the area, Gurren detailed the mission. Finally I get to finally join in on the front lines, TT Ibeo. Naruto burst into joy as he clenched his fist, boiling in anticipation of battle. Shouldn't we have some more training, Yoichi said worriedly as things were going a little too fast for him. We don't even get a break after all this, Kimizuki complained and he was looking forward in trashing Naruto in Street Fighter. Shinoa laughed at everyone's attitude. 
Gurin gave a long sigh. I think these kids are going to be the death of me. Underscore. Sky, at the large plane boarded hooded vampires except for a few and one sat at the floor, brooding over his past life and current one in his thoughts. The vampire had long wavy blonde hair that reached down his shoulders and his eyes were a dark shade of blue and his skin was pale that it could reflect upon the moon's light. He wore the standard uniform of the vampire soldiers but with his own touch of uniqueness as he wore a back collared shirt with cuffs and white trim. He kept it buttoned over his neck and held it in place with the vampire insignia. Over the black shirt, he wears the white military jacket with black trim and decorated buttons. It also has the black piece of the vampires on the left shoulder and black cuffs with white buttons that nearly reach up to his elbows. His accessories were white gloves, a thick black belt encircling his waist along with two smaller belts below it forming an X over his posterior and front. He kept his sword at his left hip. White pants with black boots reaching up to his upper thighs. The boots were detailed in design as it had three large buttons at the upper lateral sides and three smaller buttons coming up from his ankles. The soles, toe, and heels of the boots are white. A decoration over the heels consisted of a small ribbon coming from either side to make a V with a small white circular detail keeping them in place. We'll be arriving in Tokyo shortly, we expect attacks from the Japanese Imperial Demon Army, Ikebukuro, Shinjuku, and Shibuya. Please take precaution. The female pilot spoke over the intercom. Did you hear that? Lacus Welt spoke to the brooding blonde, Well Mika? We're going to Shinjuku first, Hayakuya Michaela said lowly. He was going to save Naruto from the greedy clutches of the humans. This he swore on his life. The end. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Remember to subscribe and like this video. See you in the next part.